Wonderful. All right. So um, welcome again. Uh, we have a, a pretty straightforward agenda for today's listening session uh, on the work of the Sustainability Advisory Council. After a short welcome, um, I will give a brief, uh, brief overview of the Advisory Council and the categories that will structure our small group discussions today, which is where we're going to spend the majority of our time together, um, going through two rounds of discussions before coming back together um, to share takeaways from those discussions um, and ending with quick opportunities for next steps. A few last things before we get going. Um, I wanna start by acknowledging that we are using technology. Um, so we are at times gonna be at the whims of that technology. Uh, so there's always a possibility that we will run into a glitch. So just ask for a little latitude ahead of time in case anything were to happen. In terms of some ground rules for our time together today, uh, we'd like to one, encourage you to keep your video on throughout the meeting as, as long as you're in a situation where you're comfortable doing so. Um, please mute yourself whenever you're not talking so we can limit any background noise. Use that chat feature uh, to share any resources, links, or note technical difficulties. Uh, Nathan from our team will be keeping an eye um, on that and will respond as needed. And then use the raise hand feature if you have a comment or question and we'll call on you at an appropriate time. Last and probably most importantly, I wanna acknowledge that Across all of our participants today, I'm sure we have a great range in experiences, both in terms of how long you've been working or studying at um, UW Madison or around UW Madison, how much time you've been engaged on issues of sustainability or just your general comfort with the technology we're using today. So I wanna make sure we give ourselves all a little bit of permission to be unpolished in this space together, especially during our breakout discussions today. We hope you feel comfortable voicing your thoughts, even if they're half finished thoughts totally fine. Um, and that we will all respect and honor each other's different perspectives and hopefully create a comfortable, albeit still virtual, collaboration space together. So that's it for the welcome. Um, let's jump to the work of the Advisory Council. So the Sustainable Advisory Council, or as you'll hear me call it, the SAC, is working to develop recommendations that will be delivered to the Provost and the Vice Chancellor for Finance Administration on what priorities the institution should set in our efforts to advance sustainability. These priorities will be backed with specific opportunities for action to show how they can be advanced. And I think should really capture an idea nicely summarized in actually the last sustainability task force report uh, that we should seize an opportunity to reclaim a proud tradition of UW Madison, not as a follower, but as a leader in sustainability in its broadest sense. And this is definitely a non-trivial task and something that we are very much still striving for. How is the SAC developing these priorities? So last fall, the SAC kicked off and after some time discussing how they will make their decisions, they transitioned to evaluating our opportunities to advance sustainability. Um, these were developed um, from feedback that was received during our first round of listening sessions. Um, the results of our sustainability report and benchmarking efforts, which you hear me call the STARS report as well as experience from Office of Sustainability um, staff, um, events, and the SAC members themselves. So this led to a collection of about 30, uh, what we call focus areas that span across the four STARS reporting categories of um, academics, engagement, operations, and planning and administration. So for today, we're looking for feedback on the focus areas that were developed. And at this point, they've also been preliminarily prioritized by the council, basically put in an order um, from highest priority to lowest priority. The feedback we receive today will then be carried into the remaining efforts of the SAC and used as they develop their final recommendations. Finally, for today's small group discussions, we're gonna organize ourselves around these four categories and give you the opportunity to pick which group you'd like to join. Um, I'm gonna go over each group and what they will be discussing next, but this is a warning that your first task um, is gonna to be to decide which group um, you'd like to join. And the ask is gonna be in a couple minutes. So start thinking about that now. Okay, so um, the first group will be covering the area of academics. So this category covers courses, programs, research, and associated support systems at our university that address and are advanced sustainability. The focus areas prioritized by the SAC in this category include developing a sustainability institute, focusing on advancing sustainability research, as well as um, expanding course offerings. The second group will be covering the area of engagement. Uh, this category covers programs for engaging the campus and community beyond the boundaries uh, of campus um, on issues of sustainability. 
Preliminary priorities in this group cover sustainability focused leadership and advocacy, supporting and expanding sustainability co-curricular learning opportunities, and amplifying sustainability communications and branding. The third group will be covering the area of operations. So this category covers programs for reducing the negative impact and amplifying the positive impacts of university operations, whether those are environmental impacts, economic impacts, or social impacts. Preliminary priorities included in this group are sustainable campus planning and design, opportunities for green energy and electricity, and sustainable buildings. And the last group uh, will be covering the area of planning and administration. Admittedly, a bit of a grab bag in the, the STARS world, um, this category covers the, the very vital areas in which we incorporate sustainability into university planning, the overlap of sustainability and social justice, and the sustainability of university affiliated financial investments. Uh, not surprisingly, the preliminary priorities included in this group are advancing social sustainability, integrating sustainability priorities into strategic decision making, and improving the sustainability of university affiliated financial investments. So I know that was a quick overview. Um, and again, you will actually only have an opportunity to join two of these groups with our time today. Um, but at the end of our time together, we'll touch on other opportunities to provide feedback if you're not able to get it all in today. With that, I'm going to hand it off to Deb, who is going to quickly go over the plan for the group discussions. Hello, everyone. So as Alex said, you're going to choose a group, and then you're going to have an opportunity to talk about that focus area for about 20 minutes, and then we'll give you a chance to talk to, to switch and to go to another group. So there'll be two rounds of discussion. Um, we'll talk a little bit about each of the focus areas when you get into that particular um, discussion. And there are three questions that we have for you today. What do you like about the SACS prioritized focus areas? What don't you like about the SACS prioritized focus areas? And what would you change about the SACS prioritized focus areas? Um, we are giving you a choice to go to the room that you, you know, to, to choose whichever rooms you want. I'm going to ask you to do one thing, though. If you, if you find yourself in a room that's really packed with a lot of people, and we purposefully did not assign people to rooms. We wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about the things that were important to you. And if you find a group like really overpopulated um, and, and you can go to a different group for your first round and then go back to that one the second time around. I think it's more of a chance to talk. So um, with that, I'm gonna pass it back to Alex to work a little Zoom magic. All right. Um, so I'm going to open up the breakout rooms uh, shortly. Uh, when I do, you will see a new item pop up in your toolbar. Um, it'll say breakout rooms. You can click on that and it'll open up a window that looks like this, um, where you can find the room you'd like to join and the button that says join and click on that and it'll jump you right in. Uh, if you have any technical difficulties getting into a room, um, just raise your hand. Um, I will be hanging out and helping out um, with that. Um, when we reach the end of our first discussion and we do the room switching process, it's the exact same thing. Just open up that same breakout room window and click join on the next room that you'd like to um, go into. If at any time, um, either at that point or otherwise, you're having technical difficulties, you can always leave the breakout room you're in. Um, in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a button that says leave. From there, you can choose return to the main room. I'll be hanging out in the main room here, um, helping anyone who needs to, and I can also move people to rooms as needed if we're running into any issues. So um, that is the plan. Um, cross our fingers, hope, hope it works. Um, I'm gonna open the rooms now and we will see what happens. We'll also throw this up here if this is helpful as people make their decisions. Okay, so it looks like we have uh, two people in our group for right now, so that's awesome. So let's take a minute to do some introductions. Um, I'm Deb Gerke from the Office of Strategic Consulting, and I've been working with the sustainability folks, Jake and others, on this project for about a year now. So that's me. Oh, we got another person, it looks like. And I am Jake McCullough. I'm a project and communications with the Office of Sustainability. Uh, I'm Susan DeVos and I'm in sociology, but I'm going to talk about engineering. 
Uh, my name is Gloria Heiss. I'm a student in the business school. I'm a second year. Um, I'm a part of a club called Social Environmental Business Advocates. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing all your thoughts about how to improve academics surrounding these topics. Um, we're hoping that you're going to have some thoughts for us, actually. So that's so maybe we can share. <laughs> That'll be great. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, so that you can be reminded about what the focus areas are that we're going to be talking about today. So we're in the academics area and there were seven focus areas that the SAC reviewed when we had this conversation. Um, it's like there's something in the chat. I want to, oh, that was just the link. Okay. Oh, also Jake just put a link into the chat that has a, a more detailed version of this document if you want to open it up for yourself. I'll leave this one up on the screen for now um, as I go through this. So Sustainability Institute was the number one item on the list. This would just be creating an institute like we have for many other things. Um, it would central, you know, give us a home for all the kinds of things that faculty, staff, and students uh, might pursue about sustainability related endeavors. So just be a nice hub for us. The next was sustainability research, you know, putting more criteria and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, incentives for faculty to engage and to uh, collaborate on sustainability related research, um, adding sustainability courses. So incentives to support faculty and students either incorporating sustainability in new courses or into courses that they're currently offering. Sustainability learning requirement, um, putting a campus-wide require, requirement that students have at least one um, have at least one form of sustainability learning in their transcript as they work their way through UW. Sustainability fa faculty, so hiring and, and hiring and retention programs to support faculty who focus their work in this area. Like this is their main job. This is what they work on. We want to increase that. Campus as a living lab, how do we incorporate all the things that we're learning and making sure that we're doing those things on campus? So processes to identify operations experts and connect them with faculty and staff so that they're working on things to improve things on campus, funding opportunities to support uh, resource use and professional development funding and dedicated time for campus operations experts to collaborate with, with the faculty on, that we have on campus. We have a lot of expertise. How do we take that expertise and bring it into the, our, our campus? And then finally, honors and recognition, um, develop a chancellor's award for sustainability achievement. So as you look these over, I can give you another minute or so to just kind of take a little time to review them again and gather your thoughts about them. Um, think about the three questions. What do you like about these? What don't you like about these? And what would you change if there was anything that could be changed? So I'll just give you a moment to think about that and um, into the questions. Obviously, a lot of thoughts gone into all this. It's so hard to think about. It's complex. So I, I, I think what I was going to uh, recommend, and maybe you can tell me whether it makes any sense or not, <clears throat> is that an engineering professor who I think is retired now uh, wanted to start a uh, sustainability program in transportation in the engineering school. And uh, I, uh, unfortunately, it was during the last administration in Washington, and she couldn't get any funding for it. But they have something like that at UC Berkeley at uh, various places scattered around the country. And I thought it would be a wonderful thing for us to have here. Um, does that fit into the sustainability research or the Institute? <laughs> I don't know, I guess I'd want you to say a little bit more about it. I'm not sure, it does feel like it fits in here somewhere. What do you think? I mean, it doesn't have to be super perfect. There isn't a right or wrong answer about some of these things, so. Um, would the Sustainability Institute 
be aligned with the engineering school or what? I or think cross disciplinary. It would be cross disciplinary. It wouldn't necessarily be with anyone because we really want sustainability to be infused throughout the campus, right? It's not, it's sort of like, sometimes we talk about it a little bit like we talk about diversity. It's not like one person's responsibility or one unit's responsibility to be in charge of diversity. It's really everyone's. We want everyone to be thinking about how we make the campus more diverse and inclusive. And we would like that to be the same sort of idea about sustainability. How is sustainability in all of the work that we do, in all of our programs and our academic work and the way that our buildings operate and the way that we do food service, right? So all of those sorts of things. Other thoughts, Gloria, anything that you like about these in particular? Uh, I, sorry, I like the sustainability learning requirement specifically. Um, the club that I'm a part of, we're pushing for the business school to create a requirement within the B school for students to take a class. Um, so I think that's definitely doable and I would love to see campus-wide support with that. I'm wondering, um, is there, I know you were talking about how like, I'm sure it, academics will fit in with the co-curricular things. Are there ways that the SAC has been trying to make requirements for like student org leaders to go through sustainability training so that we can talk about it like in, in specifically the business school. Like I think there should be uh, conversations with like the finance clubs and the consulting clubs about how to incorporate that. Um, and I love like all the things you guys are touching on. Um, I would love to push for more than just one requirement for a class, but I understand that this is like building momentum currently. Um, I don't see anything for like graduate students, but I don't know if that's like specifically like a focus that or if there is like implied to be with other categories. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, we haven't called out grad students really in, in our thinking and talking about this, so. I think we kind of lean on sustainability research to kind of incorporate the graduate student pool. Yeah. Um, but I agree, it might be useful to call them out yeah rather than assuming they're there right Gloria, yeah. i want to follow up on one topic you mentioned you said you're pushing for something like a learning requirement in the business school is it a uh, learning requirement related to sustainability is it like sustainability broadly is it you know um, the economic implications of sustainability could you say a little bit more about that yeah absolutely so in our conversations with the associate and assistant dean of the B-School. We're trying to push for them to just have a general requirement because the B-School technically has specific classes that align with focuses in sustainability. So it's not that we lack the kind of classes, but we lack incentive to take the class. So our thought was, if there's a way for the B-School to support this mission on campus, it would be to create a subcategory requirement within our curriculum um and i think it obviously would make it easier for them to do that if there was a campus-wide requirement already so then they just like filtered in um we are in the talks of like creating a class for the b school but that's primarily for like injustices in business that would focus more on like racial inequality wealth gaps opportunity gaps but obviously there's crossover between um, racial inequality and social inequality with sustainability. Hopefully that answers your question. Thanks. Yeah, definitely, thank you. Go ahead, Susan. Well, I had a question for Gloria actually, because there was a uh, lecture in the, the business school at one time. I don't know if he's active anymore, and I wonder if she knows of Tom Eckert. 
and he had a, a seminar every Friday for a number of years, I think, about sustainability issues. Is he doing something like that now? The seminar isn't taking place, but I do know of him. He's a connection that we have as a club. Okay. He's actually in the planning administration group in, the, in one of the other breakout rooms right now in the meeting. Great. So is there anything about these areas that you don't like? think it's well thought out. Gloria, what do you think? You're muted. Yeah, sorry, I was just taking a moment. Um, I... I want to like have better insight to be able to provide some critique. Is there like, have you guys put thought into specifically like addressing racial, is racial issues with sustainability? I don't know if that's like going to a different subcategory of topics. Um, Yeah, we have touched on it. I think it might come out a little bit, Jake, do you think maybe in like the engagement piece somehow, maybe a little bit? Yeah, I, so this, this concept is incorporated broadly as a, you know, the concept of social sustainability, and that's kind of a, a catch-all in planning and administration credits or, or focus area that we're talking about. Um, but this, that idea that it fits under one of these categories is something we've been grappling with over yeah. the last few years. And we don't agree that it fits just like under one of these umbrellas. It's really cross-functional across all realms of sustainability, well, whether that's, that's be economic, environmental. Go ahead, Susan. Well, I was going to say, I was glad to hear you say that because so many people seem inherently to limit the idea of sustainability to environmental issues. And it's not just environmental. Yeah, so as Jake said, we continue to talk about how to make sure that that looks, that you see it in everything that's on this list. It's still sort of almost like an umbrella idea for the focus areas. Anything that you would change about them? We have a few minutes left. I know it's frustrating, but you've done a terrific job. <laughs> well, that's good to know that you think that. That's not frustrating to have somebody tell you you've done a good job. <laughs> Anything for you, Gloria? I don't want to. I don't want to force you to say something. I just want to make sure that you have a chance to say whatever it is you want to say. I'm having a hard time understanding the distinction between Sustainability Institute and then the campus as a living lab. Is campus as a living lab more of like a culture change? And if so, could we make that like clearer potentially? So, yeah. Um, I think some of it is about making sure that the things that are happening in from the research world around sustainability find their way into the campus in the way that we, you know, like let's say someone does some research around food and sustainability and then that change finds its way into the way that we do food first or food service on campus and that that we provide opportunities for staff who are working in areas where we might have an impact around sustainability can connect with the researchers doing that kind of stuff so that we're bringing the Wisconsin idea not just out to the world but actually back into our own work and on campus would you say that did I describe that correctly Jake? Yeah, I think that's a great job. Another term for campus as a living lab is experiential learning. So it's basically using academics to inform operations and using our operations to inform academics by making connections between students and what's happening on campus so that students are experiencing you know, hands-on learning. And we're also improving operations by using student expertise to look at things a different way in operations. Sustainability Institute 
on the other hand, is basically elevating the, the level at which students, staff, and faculty engage in sustainability on campus. So right now we have, you know, through the Nelson Institute, there's the Center for Global and Environmental Sustainability. There is a sustainability for engineering certificate in the engineering school. There's the Office of Sustainability at, you know, fp and There are all these kind of like disparate little sections of sustainability around campus. Sustainability Institute tries to be, you know, tries to solve that problem in capturing everything that's related to sustainability under one broader umbrella as, you know, an institute. So think of it as, you know, a sustainability school or institute. So that we're not working at cross purposes, that we can leverage the things that we're doing and learn from each other around these issues and make things, you know, rather than one thing going on over here in the right hand, not knowing what the left hand is doing, which sometimes happens. <laughs> So it looks like we have, um, Alex gave us the, the five minute warning a little bit ago. So it looks like we have about three minutes to go. Is there anything else beyond these three questions that you wanna make sure that we capture from this conversation? Well, I just wanted to add that there's a very old saying called think globally and act locally, which is what I got the impression the Living Lab was about. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good way to think about it. That's awesome. Thank you for that, Susan. <clears throat> Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> she has chosen this moment to misbehave and I don't really know what else I can do with her. <laughs> well, I, I guess if there's no more feedback on these specific focus areas, I wanted to ask you both, Susan and Gloria, what are, what are experiences you've had on campus or on the, in the campus community that you see as opportunities in the realm of sustainability? Well, uh, a big thing for me is, is the way food, food service is because of cut down on the amount of labor, but at the expense of having a lot of plastic utensils, a lot of napkins, a lot of uh, plastic straws, all kinds of things that are not all that uh, thoughtful as far as sustainability issues go, I guess. Yeah. I think my experience is mainly around the academic side as a student um, and realizing how limited of an education I'm getting on sustainability, even though I feel like it's like a pivotal point as a business student, at least, um, in how I'm going to be making decisions in the future. And even as like creating a mindset of considering sustainability, every decision that I make is kind of lacking in the classes I have. So that's probably my experience, kind of one of disappointment toward the educational side of things where I feel like I have to do a lot of my own supplemental research and learning um, and like finding experiences like this and getting programming on my own when I really wish my professors valued it more um, and incorporated it into my already pre-required classes so I don't have to get a certificate in sustainability because I currently don't have the time to do that. Um, just like accessibility probably the main thing that I wish I had. Very helpful feedback, thank you. Does everybody know how to get to the next room that you're gonna to go to? Uh, just push the breakout, right? Or Yeah, correct? it's under more. If you go to more, you'll see the button for the breakout rooms and then you'll see them. You'll be able to go there. Just wanna, thought we'd cover that before we get down to the last second. And Thank you. <laughs> This, I don't, doesn't mean that we can't continue to talk. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew how to do that. Okay, we're gonna get ready to move on here, it looks like. Thank you so much for putting this together and yeah. speaking with us, this is great. Thanks for coming. We appreciate your time and your thoughts. Yeah, no problem.
Should I switch now? You can go ahead and switch. I think it's okay. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. I thought the yeah. academics would be a little more popular. <laughs> yeah, I, I was pretty surprised. Like Aaron Birdbear, Tom Eggert, like those are. I mean, they they engage. Yeah. Plus, it's like because... what we're about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're, you know, they're so in the trenches of academics already. They're like, I just want to talk about food waste and recycling. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think well, for two people, though, um, that was a really great conversation. So, I, yeah, I they had, navigate yeah. That. they were both really good. And I, I loved that it was a, it was a business school student. Like, <laughs> is this not part of my education? <laughs> It's just like, because yeah. that's the, that's like the hardest department to get into for sustainability because they're like, oh, it's always sustainability and economics are always at odds, but they're really not like, no, no, so it's just that the great. costs are hidden, right? I mean, the, the right. costs are, are downstream, like, you know, we, future generations exactly. pay for it or the next town pays for it or, yep. or yep. yeah, I thought that was pretty sweet that she was from the B school. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, SEBA is the group, it sounds like she she's a part of social economic business advocates, I think it is. And yeah, that's, a, that's a really great group. So um, be interesting if we can engage with them a bit more. Yeah. Did you write her name down? I did, yep. Good thinking. I couldn't tell, was, was Gloria a professor of sociology or? I don't know. I couldn't tell from what she was saying. She sure did know a lot about campus though. Right. And things that weren't in her area. Yeah, I thought it was funny that she brought up Tom Eggert because I, I saw him floating around on the screen at the, <laughs> at the first thing. I wonder if, oh, here we go. We we're just wondering if anybody was going to show up. Hi, Stephanie, how are you? Hi, Des. I'm good. How are you? Okay. Where did you come from? What group were you in? I was first in, the, I think it's called a social sustainability. Um, yeah, work, ne work network. Um, I forgot the name, I'm sorry. And Stephanie, I believe we met at the um, Governor's Climate Change Task Force, one of the public listening sessions. Uh, yes, I do remember that. Mm. It was right before the pandemic hit. It was like one of the one of the last in person things. Wow. Yes, <laughs> I, I I remember your face somewhere. <laughs> well, let's just give it another thirty seconds to see if anyone else is going to join our group. Did you go to two different groups, Stephanie? It sounded like you said, or did you just go to the one? I kind of like jumped around. <laughs> yeah. Were there a lot of people in the other groups that you were in? Yes. Um, like, um, I think it was engagement. They had five and then academics. And then there was another one. Uh, I think it was like planning for the university that had seven people and the last one had like 10 people. So. Mm -hmm. Just a, those are just approximates, though. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it looks like maybe 
it's going to be the three of us right now. It doesn't, unless someone else uses your strategy and does a little jumping around. So I'll introduce myself. I'm Deb Gerke. I'm from the Office of Strategic Consulting, and I've been working with the Office of Sustainability on this project for about a year now. Jake? And again, I'm Jake McCullough. I'm a project and communication specialist with the Office of Sustainability, and I provide general project assistantship in, during the Sustainability Advisory Council process. So welcome, Stephanie. And um, as in the other groups, we're looking at the list of focus areas that are related to academics, though, is not what the other ones are related to. And here we have seven focus areas that were discussed by the Sustainability Council. Jake just put a link in the chat that will um, give you a, a broader, uh, more complete uh, explanation of what these are, but I've got a sort of a truncated version that I can put up here on the screen for you to look at. The first one is the Sustainability Institute. And what the Institute would do is uh, sort of serve as a hub and provide a home for faculty, staff, and students, projects around campus that are related to sustainability putting them all in one place rather than having them scattered, you know, the Nelson Institute, the Office of Sustainability, various different places, kind of give, bring them all together so that we can leverage that work um, more efficiently and effectively. Sustainability research, putting a focus more on developing uh, research, uh, a research agenda around sustainability on campus, um, defining the criteria for that work, um, developing the processes to keep track to know what's what we're doing and around sustainability research, and then to provide incentives for faculty and staff to actually engage in that sustainability sort of research. Sustainability courses, develop some incentives so that staff and faculty incorporate sustainability into existing courses and develop new courses that focus on sustainability. A sustainability learning requirement uh, that would require students to participate in at least one sort of one form of sustainability learning. So there would have to be something that would be official on their transcript. Sustainability faculty, hiring faculty and retaining them, uh, as particularly faculty that are focused on sustainability research. So really broadening that agenda, strengthening that research agenda around sustainability. And the final one, uh, not the final one, there's one more after that. Campus as a living lab really just kind of bring the, you know, bring sustainability to life on campus, connect faculty and staff uh, who are, who might, you know, researcher who might be doing some work on, on sustainability that could be applied on campus, make something better on campus, incorporating students into that work, uh, sort of a living, you know, experiential learning for them, um, that kind of idea. And then finally, an honors and recognition program, uh, where there would be an award developed, a chancellor's award for sustainability achievement. So those are the things that were discussed by the um, Sustainability Council. And so today we're asking people to uh, answer three questions for us about these. Which ones do you like about the prioritized focused areas? What don't you like about the prioritized focused areas? And what would you change if there was something to change? So we can you know, give you a minute to kind of look at that, absorb it, think about it for a second. And whenever you're ready, we'll just wait, you know, we'll just give you the floor, it's yours. I appreciate it. I actually very much like this whole framework. Um, just because as you said, am I like, can you guys hear me or is it echo? Nope, you're good. Okay. Um, like combining everything, like the Nelson Institute, like the social, um, the sustainability office into one place so students can understand like where is everything coming from. And if even if students have questions or faculty or staff um, about sustainability, how the university is managing all that, they can have like one place to go, or one go to place. Um, Research is always needed, especially as we move forward towards deadlines for tipping point 2030, 2050. Um, I like the idea of a activity to be like a court, a requirement on a course. Um, the only thing that um, I think should be stated with this is such as um, to make it a way to expose students or even faculty in the training. I don't know how this is gonna uh, look like, um, but not make it a burden. 
you know, not make it a burden to seniors to not graduate, not make it a burden for students who already struggle paying tuition and having to add another course, you know, make it a flexible because um, there is another conversation that also started with the whole idea of the requirement course for uh, ethnic studies and how some people think it's a really good idea to expose um, students to world issues and identities, uh, oppressed identities, marginalized identities, but at the end of the day, it's still a requirement. So you're not doing it out of your own interest, you're doing it to graduate, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I guess what I'm trying to say with all this is that like, if we have some flexibility on what sustainability could look like in a course, people would be more interested in it rather than being it a requirement at all, taking into account also mental health. Um, yes, I think the rest of the um, frameworks are really good ideas. Um, the honors and recognition one is always good to recognize people, uh, but just like as Greta Thunberg was offered like a prize and money for her um, continual activism and she like turned it down a lot of times, not all prizes. It just, you know, speaks millions to what the ongoing problem is, you know, like I would like, for instance, if they could consider more um, climate change um, effects on students and faculty. So I know moving forward that we're gonna see more depression, anxiety, or just trauma response oh. in students. And so mental health, how are we gonna like expand on that for students, especially as climate change gets worse? You know, we're gonna know that pandemics mm -hmm. can become a lot more often of a thing. More people can lose jobs, especially if we're transitioning from fossil fuel to green jobs. Like a lot of people will be affected by it. Housing discrimination, among many other things, you know, so like we have to address the roots of it within ourselves in order to address the problem systematically. Um, that thing, that's my only take on all of this, to be honest. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> it's very thoughtful. Are you a student or an employee of the university? Just curious. I am a student, but I also work for the university. Yeah. Ah, okay, so you're both. <laughs> all right. Is there anything about them, these that you don't like? I think the it's not that I don't like it, but it's not a priority. Um, it's the honors and recognition award, the chances award, you know, um, because also if we expand mental health from just like a go-to place for like counseling sessions or things like that, what about like addressing it from our classrooms? You know, if students feel so much of a burden or too much on their plate, what about talking to instructors about um, be more lenient with flexible with dates, deadlines, not saying to them make it to like, you know, but everything at its own pace so like students can breathe and understand what's going on in their surroundings, you know, like coronavirus definitely hit some students more than yeah. others and their academics like definitely were shaking. I know I can speak from my experience it really hit me hard and yeah, but we're working through it. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything that you would change other than, I mean, so you, you know, the honors and recognition is one, anything else that you would change or modify? Actually, no, I have a question about sure. sustainability, sustainability faculty. Uh, would that personnel uh, work along with research or is there like more programs like they would work with? Well, usually when faculty are hired, there's three things that they're basically responsible for, research, um, teaching and service. So they have to do all, you know, some combination of those things. Now there's also lots of different ways that can be hired. They could be in one department, they could be a cluster hire where they are collaborative amongst a couple of departments. They could be affiliated with a center or an institute. So there's lots of different variations about how that basic, those basic three components work. Um, I think as we continue to value 
and need collaboration around the complexity of the issues that we're facing that you know, how does that can affect tenure? So there's some issues there to think about for how we do faculty, but certainly getting people to work more collaboratively is going to wind up even more important than it might be right now. So it's it, it's really, it's one of those influx, very sort of complicated places on campus. One thing to deal about, about one thing as we deal about it. Does that help answer the question at all? <laughs> yes, it did. It actually like um, made me think immediately about like diversifying the issue of climate change having said that like you know just just like you said climate change is such a multifaceted issue but if we could hire personnel that has like that um experiences or identities that intersect race gender climate change a lot of students could really feel connected and more lenient to like understand better the issue and how it is affecting them every day. Um, you know, like just actually in the last call, um, someone was asking like, I, I like, excuse my ignorance, but I just don't understand how social sustainability is more of an important issue than like sustainability or climate change. And sometimes you just have to like, you know, make those connections of why social justice equals climate justice in order to understand better how can we bring everybody to the table to talk about it because as we know sustainability was brought and created by black and indigenous people yeah and i think one of the things that we struggled with through this process is some of these cut across different areas i mean i think we've noticed that certainly with the social um, sustainability concept but there are others as well that seem to cross over between academics and engagement or you know so categorization is always a, a tricky process. And you're right, we want to think about how these things are interconnected. Because that would be more effective, a more effective way to look at them. Is there anything that you want to share with us that we didn't ask you about something that you just wanted to make sure you said when you came and these questions didn't address any of that? To be honest, I think um, it was heard when I said the idea about mental health and um, academics and how students and faculty uh, don't only want to isolate it on students can become um, um, overwhelmed very easily with everything that's going on in the world. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a good point. I didn't kind of forget about that, right? There are people in the middle of all of this stuff and sometimes it can be hard. Yeah. Well, you've obviously done a lot of thinking about this and we appreciate you coming today to share that with us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, just like as Jake saw it, um, I have the report, the Climate Change Task Force report right here with me. <laughs> oh, Great. You know, it was a lot of these conversations, the same thing happened. There's a lot of overlapping. We had issues like categorizing. So I just thought I could give, you know, my little input with, something I kind of already went through and how I know it's hard. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. What kind of dog do you have? I'm sorry. What kind of dog do you have? Oh, she's a Chihuahua rat terrier mix and she's been misbehaving through this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> she just wants me to pay attention to her. And I'm like, no, I have work to do. <laughs> this right so now, cute. So I'm trying to get her to just like be happy with me, pet. She wants me to throw to play fetch with her, and that's like, no, I can't play fetch right now. <laughs> yeah, I always love that she's on screen at least like a quarter of the time where it meetings with you. <laughs> I know, I know. And and if we had meetings in the morning, she sleeps all morning. <laughs> <laughs> she's like clockwork. Eleven o'clock, she wakes up and we have to go outside and then the rest of the day it's like crap shoot of what's going to happen <laughs> dogs are going to be so confused when we go back in person oh it's going to be so hard yeah she's not going to like that too much but she's my character yes my parents got a dog last march so a year ago and he was a puppy all through a pandemic so he was always <laughs> surrounded by family he had no problem but then my parents are going to work and now we come back to like the toilet paper all like <laughs> or, or 
And we're like, who raised you? <laughs> like, where's my yeah. people? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I appreciate uh, you all for listening to my little rants. <laughs> no, take this. you had some really good things to say. We're glad that you came. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you all. <laughs> Have a good one, Stephanie. Looks like we got about 20. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, so my name is Tracy and I'll be facilitating this session. Um, since there's only four of us, we can go around and introduce each other um, briefly. If you can say your name and then maybe your affiliation, that would be great. And then we can kind of go and I'll share my screen and start going over the focus areas. Um, so I'll go first. I'm Becca Raven Yaminowitz. I am an administrative manager for the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences. I can go next. Um, my name is Steve Wayland. I'm a practicing engineer, um, design and consulting engineer for the firm DC Engineering. And I also serve as the board chair for the local nonprofit Sustain Dane. So I'm here in that capacity um, to hear about what's going on at the university and share some thoughts that I might have. Great, thanks Steve. Uh, my name is Aaron Birdbear, and I go by he, him, his. Uh, I couldn't, they wouldn't allow me to alter, so I couldn't do it. Um, and I'm the inaugural Tribal Relations Director here at UW-Madison, and so I'm in the Office of University Relations and the Division Extension. I'm not a member of one of the Indigenous Nations of the Western Great Lakes. Uh, I'm a member of the Mandan, Hadatsa, and Arikara Nation, and I'm also, uh, my mother's a member of the Navajo Nation, so my ancestors are from a, a thousand miles away from here, but I've got to know the First Nations of the Western Great Lakes in my role in working on campus for the past 20 years. Great, thanks again. And I know Missy will be um, taking notes for us. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. Let me know when you guys can see that. All right, so um, for the engagement focus areas, I'm just gonna go over the areas quickly. I'll leave them up during the discussion and then we'll move into the questions. Um, so there's eight. The first is sustainability leadership and advocacy. Um, so this focuses on the alignment, engagement of students, faculty and staff, um, as well as collaborations across UW system and the Big Ten. Um, the second is sustainability co-curricular learning. So this includes department level personnel, tasked with fostering co-curricular learning opportunities, um, as well as a hub for co-curricular sustainability activities and student organizations. The third is sustainability communications and branding. Um, so this has to do with coordinated approach to sustainability communications, as well as a sustainability forum to share and discuss issues in sustainability. Um, then there's sustainability events focused around policies for improving the sustainability of campus events. Um, sustainability athletics, so sustainability requirements for recreation and well being, um, as well as sustainability plans for athletic operations, events, and communications. Continuing education, um, so coordinated outreach and advertising efforts of sustainability related continuing education courses and programs, as well as incentives to support faculty and staff to incorporate sustainability in new and existing courses. Um, sustainability onboarding and training. So this is sustainability presentations during um, SOAR and training in professional development courses for faculty and staff. And then the last is alumni engagement. So of course, engagement of alumni and sustainability programs, successes and different opportunities. Um, so I'll leave this up so we can refer back to this, but the first question we wanna know is what do you like about the SAC's prioritized focus areas? Um, and then we'll move on to anything that you don't like about them. But if we want to kind of open up the discussion to things that, that you like about this, um, that would be great. I can give you a minute too, to, I know that's a lot of information. Well, one thing I, I would I'd add is that, um, you know, I, when I think of sustainability and on our kind of mindset around sustainability and conservation, you know, I think about um, this framework that we're doing here is just really focused on kind of settler colonialism framework of, settler, of, of, of conservation and, and sustainability. Mm -hmm. 
you know, UW Madison is created in 1848. Um, people have lived on the shores of Lake Mendota for 12,000 years. And so when we kind of focus on this framework, we're looking literally at the last 1.4% of a very different ideology of relationship to the land. Sure. And so 98.6% of the human story of our campus is, is of a very different relationship to the land. Mm -hmm. um, the Ho-Chunk Nation are currently writing uh, rights of nature into their constitution about their relationship with this land since this is their ancestral and territories and, and treaty territories. And so if we think about their stewardship, they had created an oak savanna over thousands of years of fire ecology in this region. And we decimated that ecosystem in the creation of Madison and Wisconsin as a state. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we as a settler colonial society have completely transformed the ecosystems of this place. Um, they used to be uh, the, the roosting grounds of the passenger pigeon, which was the most populous bird mm -hmm. species in North America until it was rapidly extinct uh, due to the practices of settler colonialism. So, you know, the culture and worldview, the Ho-Chunk, they still have the pigeon clan within their society that reflects the passenger pigeon being a really important species that has now been decimated from this environment. So I think about indigenous peoples and their worldviews and, and how they understand their connection to this land and how their culture reflects their connection to this land and how they tried to live within a compact with nature. Um, so the compact with nature is like respecting all living beings as our relatives and teachers, that we're not above animals, that we are simply, actually we're lesser than because we need them all to support ourselves. And so in many ways, like the viewpoint of indigenous peoples and connection to the living world around us, plant and animal, is so foundationally different than the settler colonial view of exploiting the environment for resources for profit. So I, I kind of think about, you know, where, how are we ignoring indigenous worldview of the people who've lived here for thousands of years in this particular framework? And I think it'd be good to recognize considering that their cultures and worldviews um, yeah. require a compact with nature and respecting all living beings as equal, as equal living beings in this space. So something to think about uh, just the framework itself. It just, I don't see any indigeneity in it. We're just kind of ignoring the 98.6% of humans who shape this environment and we're focusing on literally the last 1.4% of the story of the radical transformation and decimation of the ecosystems that were here prior to the settlement of Wisconsin by Europeans and European Americans. So just, just something I, I just, you know, I see this, I'm like, wow, no indigeneity at all for the people who lived here for the vast majority of the time. And, and then we're just focusing on how uh, the destructive elements of the creation of Wisconsin and the elimination of the existing ecosystems um, that we just don't, it's not acknowledged in any way, shape or form in this frame. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that. I like that, Aaron, and I like that that we have to be cognizant of that that shortfall that we have with so many of our systems and processes, um, whether it's at the university, you know, or businesses, and just how we look at the, the land. Um, a couple of the things that I I see that are good in this, you know, I see the words learning, I see the words training, I see the words you know, education. Um, so this is, we have to remember, this is a, a learning process for everybody. Um, and when we are in these uh, engagement settings, whether it be through education or through some type of event or some type of um, workshop, the, uh, the learning is happening both ways. And we have to be open to listening to things that are different from what we've grown up learning. For example, what Aaron just talked about. Um, I grew up with the mindset that, you know, the country started, you know, a couple hundred years ago, which is not the truth. Um, the other thing I like is, is uh, in the word engagement. Um, now that's for, for alumni, but I think we, uh, we also have to think about engagement with uh, students, with faculty, and with the, um, the general public outside of the UW. And um, just, you know, the, the Wisconsin idea talks about that three prong idea of, of Wisconsin and the UW is definitely, you know, the main part of it, but we have to, through our sustainability engagement, we have to be um, always thinking about how we engage people, how we bring them in, how we get new ideas, um, and not just be locked in, in maybe one mindset or one paradigm like, like Aaron was talking about. So those are my thoughts on what I see is good here. Great, thanks Steve.
I like the word incentivize. I mean, incentives are buried within there where it's like incentives. I'm continuing education. Um, you know, uh, you know, students often are really have their hearts and souls interested in these ideas, and they're our biggest constituency on campus. I mean, there's 40,000 students. They outnumber us like two to one. Um, and uh, and and but you know, they work. Uh, they have a lot of demands, life demands. And so, you know, incentivizing students is really important. And usually we have to incentivize it in the form of credit today, like one credit seminars. If you really want to capture student attention and interest, you have to reward them with a, a credit of something they've earned. And it shows that they've earned something. Uh, not that they're not disinterested. It's just they have a lot of life demands of work and other things that impede mm -hmm. them from giving their full attention and effort sometimes to, to or, or even follow through on some things. And so we found that, you know, we used to do so many extracurricular stuff that um, we can no longer do just because student time is so limited. And so, mm -hmm. you know, incentivizing, I think, is a really good part of this thing. Of how do you, we incentivize faculty by making funds available to them. They have to compete for those funds in the form of like internal grant competitions. Mm -hmm. um, for our shared future initiative and in teaching about this land from the Ho-Chunk perspective, you know, the vice provost for teaching and learning put up money for grants that faculty and departments could apply for, and that was very successful. So I like the, the notion of incentive that's that's built into this, that, you know, people don't change because they see the light, they change because they feel the fire. And there usually has to be some economic imperative for people to have a behavior change until you you know feel a strong economic imperative for behavior change. Although you know it's a good idea, you should change, doesn't mean you're going to enact behavior change. And, and sustainability and conservation require an incredible mindset change. Uh, and that's that's hard for people to accomplish hmm. without incentives. Yeah, definitely. Good point. Any other thoughts? Um, the the last, the third question, which we kind of talked about, but anything that um, you would want to change based on these prioritized focus areas? Um, I also like well-being being brought into this, right? You know, our health and well-being is really important. I think there was some study I saw this year that said if you daily witness four different species of birds, like if you can see four different species of birds every day, like your quality of life and health is just better. And so um, it's just kind of like being able to see and engage the natural world around us is a form of well-being for ourselves. Like we just have a healthier and, and happier lives. And so, you know, in my perfect world, if we were great stewards of this land, we'd return it into a, you know, the most biodiverse place we could instead of having lawns, which are fun and aesthetically pleasing to kind of showcase buildings and those kind of things. But they're nutritional deserts for animals for the most part. Like you know, grass lawns are, don't don't really help the monarchs who have called this place home for time and memorial or the different animal species. And so if we cared about yeah. sustainability and conservation, we'd think about, okay, how do we sustain all living beings around us, not just us? It seems to be a sustainability framework focused just on us. Right, um, yeah. But we should be thinking about the well-being of all the living beings, plant and animal, of what was formerly a tall grass prairie and oak savanna system and all the natural species that come with tall grass prairie and oak savanna systems that we still have lingering around us and despite those ecosystems being eradicated. So, mm -hmm. so I, I just think about mm -hmm. that, you know, well-being is important, but I think well-being for all of us and that, you know, if you have more animal species around, you can see more than four species of bird a day, you're gonna have a higher quality of life. And so I'm just yeah. kind of thinking in those terms. Uh, to add on to that, Aaron, I, I'd like to say, you know, the idea of, of outdoor learning, outdoor being, um, um, like you said, contributes to well-being. So engagement in the outdoors, um, and I think so many of us over the last year because of COVID, where we've been kind of stuck in our houses working remotely, um, we've been able to take the chance to get outside because that's a safe place to maybe take a walk with somebody you know, six feet away and also just um, have more time to appreciate the beautiful uh, city parks, county parks, state parks, and natural Wisconsin um, native planting environments that are available in, um, in this part of the state um, and all over our state. So learning um, in outdoor settings and learning from nature um, some engineers call that biomimicry. Um, so we learn from nature, we learn what nature does, and we, um, uh, it's, been, it's been worked out over years and years and years, thousands of millions of years. So we learn from nature. Um, the other thing I wanna say is, 
is the idea of learning from um, students and learning that kind of reverse idea of learning. Um, and I think students, because of their age, because they're not, haven't been kind of jaded by our society and the, uh, the way that we've uh, looked at sustainability for the last 50 years, um, a lot of us adults and faculty and alumni um, might see it. Uh, they can teach us and they can teach us to be more open to new ideas. So I think we need to ha have something related to that in these, uh, these focus areas. Um, I, I am learning so much which is why I joined to want to be here because it's so easy to just not really know what the heck we're talking about or what the heck needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you. Thank you for all of this really important information that I'm like going, I don't know that I would have ever got there without you getting there. So thank you. As I'm listening and looking, I'm feeling like sustainable health is missing from engagement. Um, we have athletics, but we don't like just have the health. Um, and I'm not sure it fits here, but that comes to mind for me. And then also, I have this sense of this is very, and maybe this is what it's going to be, but very campus participants, faculty, students, staff focused. And yet we have Aaron, 98% indigenous people, history, tradition, culture, that we're not opening up to engagement of that. How do we know, how do we learn all of that? How do we acknowledge, we don't even have a clue about that. And, you know, and I guess it's that there's the hierarchy or the privilege of education that might be, making a boundary where that, that door is not open to someone who maybe doesn't have a degree. But if I'm engaging sustainability engagement, how do I, how do I learn that? How do I start to implement that? Does that make any sense? Does that fit here? I, I don't, I, that's just what's I'm seeing not, not being addressed here. Yeah, I, I think so. Absolutely. The, the point of the engagement focus area is both within the campus and the community. Yeah. So I think that it's very heavily focused on the campus is what you're talking about. Missing a lot of um, aspects is, yeah, that's yeah. a great point. Like, how would we consider that when we're not mm -hmm. even, we don't even create any space to be exposed to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I like you know your, your kind of wellness talk, a little health talk. I mean, it reminded me of, of recreational. Like we used to have like the natatorium and the surf, and and now they're calling it rec well. Like they 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 don't think of just they think of rec how we care for ourselves as wellness, right? So this larger wellness kind of mindset we're trying to impart to students now in the new natatorium. I've been working with the designers of the new natatorium to incorporate kind of ho chunk worldview into the new natatorium site. Um, and so, you know, they've been excited and the, the Ho-Chunk are really excited about wellness as a concept like rec well that we call it rec well now. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of think of how does sustainability integrate with this sense of wellness that we're trying to promote for our, our campus community. Um, and so, you know, and, and wellness in the Ho-Chunk world would be the you know, respect for all living beings, not just us, but plant and animal, right? But mm -hmm. um, wellness is a really fundamental concept, I think, that we're trying to adhere to. As, a, as a, we're kind of stressed out in the information age and we're trying to figure out how to manage our lives better. Um, but sustainability, I think, and health and wellness kind of go together in some way. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and maybe just to add on to that is, um, you know, sustainable food systems and yeah. what, what we're serving at the, uh, the camp, campus um, dining halls and food service buildings, and how it's prepared and what what the young people are eating and what they're learning, how it's packaged, all those things that go, on, go along with health and sustainable foods and, and where it came from. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, we just had the last fall, the listening to land first year interest group, listening to land first year interest group. And it was having students engage the land for how people have engaged nature around us for time immemorial. So we had indigenous scholars and leaders come in to engage that first year interest group to share their kind of practices of, of how they've engaged the environment over time immemorial. So it was a really wonderful kind of learning. So just remind you, and it's part of like the food sovereignty movement that's happening in the indigenous world right now that we're trying to return to the diets that our ancestors have because we have so many bad diets from trying to be all these processed foods and, um, and how that's really hurt us as a indigenous peoples to such a great degree that we have the greatest prevalence of diabetes and heart disease of all populations in the United States. And so the food sovereignty movement for us is, okay, we know that these highly processed foods are bad for us. And so how do we get away from them to be more well? So I think less sustainability minded of like, how would you that farm to table? How could you be more engaged with your food system around you in some way? How would you nurture the environment so you could have these healthy foods nearby that you could you could access them instead of mm -hmm. having to deal with highly processed foods that have been damaging indigenous communities for a long time? Mm -hmm. So that food piece just reminded me of that. So sustainability and in the way we you know, nutrition and feed ourselves in some way. Right. right. Yeah, definitely. I, I just got a notification. Did you guys see it to wrap up and then um, switch groups? So if there's anything anyone else has to add in closing, but thank you very much. This was really helpful. Thank you, Tracy, for taking all the notes. Much appreciated. And thanks, Becca, for leading the discussion. Nice to meet uh, both of you for this discussion. Very good. It was very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, too. Take care. Take care. Hey, Marion. We'll give it a minute or so to see if anyone else joins. Tracy, is there a PDF of the um, of the focus areas? Yes. Okay. There is um, that you want to look at on your own screen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Sanaz. Missy. Hi. How are place? you? Good. How are you? Do you remember me? I work at the Arboretum. Yes. No, I recognize your name immediately. Congrats on getting your certification. Thank you. Mary and I just messaged um, Alex to try to find where to access that. Can you see this for the time being, though? Oh, here it is. Never mind. I will put this in the chat. Let me just. So, thank you. It's easier for me to. No, oh, not a problem. Yeah. Thank you. Let me know if that works. All right, I think we can get started. It looks like it might just be a small group, um, which is good. We'll have a lot more time to um, discuss. So um, my name is Tracy and I'll be facilitating this session. This is the engagement focus areas. If you guys um, wouldn't mind just taking a minute to introduce yourselves and maybe your affiliation before we get started. Um, I'll press record in the meantime, or maybe this is still actually. So if either of you want to start. 
Uh, I'm Marion Ferrier. I work at the Arboretum. I've been there for 18 years doing ecological restorations there, working with community members and students. And I also work for the U.S. Green Building Council. Great. Thanks, Marion. I'm Madeline Norton. I work in the Space Management Office and Facilities. Uh, I've been on campus for about two years and I have um, a minor in Sustainable Studies. Great. Thanks, Madeline. Um, hi, I'm Sanaz. I'm an alumni. I graduated last May. And while on campus, I was involved with the Office of Sustainability and Associated Students of Madison. Great, thanks. And I'm Travis. I work for the Office of Sustainability. Travis. And Missy will be taking um, notes on the right side. So you guys can see those while we have our discussions. Um, so before we start, I'm just going to go over the there's eight focus areas for engagement. Um, and then on the right here, there's some examples of different initiatives that would fall under those so you can get a better idea. Um, so the first is sustainability, leadership and advocacy. So some examples are alignment and engagement of students, faculty and staff, um, collaboration across the UW system and other big 10 schools. The second is sustainability co-curricular learning. So department level personnel, being tasked with fostering co-curricular learning opportunities, as well as a hub for co-curricular sustainability activities and student organizations. The third is sustainability communications and branding. So core coordination approaches to sustainability communications that encompass the breadth of campus and involves a variety of communicators, as well as a sustainability forum to share and discuss issues in sustainability. The fourth is sustainable events. So policies for improving the sustainability of campus events. The fifth is sustainable athletics. So sustainability requirements for recreation and well-being athletic operations and events, as well as sustainability plans for athletic operations, events, and communications. Um, the sixth is continuing education. So coordinated outreach and advertising efforts of sustainability related continuing education courses and programs, as well as different incentives to support faculty and staff in incorporating sustainability in new and existing courses. The seventh is sustainability onboarding and training. So sustainability presentations during events like SOAR, as well as training and professional development for courses for faculty and staff. And then the last is alumni engagement. So this is the engagement of alumni in sustainability programs, successes and opportunities. Um, I'll just give everybody a minute to kind of look over those. Um, and then we can kind of talk about, um, maybe we'll begin with what do you like about the SAC's prioritized focus areas? Is that okay? Can everybody like see it okay? Or I mean, I can cut it off so you don't see the notes as well if it's not big enough, but this kind of fits the best if that works. Um, I can start with what I like. Yeah. Um, uh, so the first thing I noticed right away um, was in the first one, collaboration across the UW system and Big Ten. Um, I'm really glad that's incorporated. And I think it's important to see the overall picture because we can learn so much from other UW system schools and other Big Ten schools on how they've incorporated similar policies. Um, and especially with Big Ten, there's a lot of universities that are equal in kind of capacity and you know how they operate just like Madison. Um, and knowing what worked for them, I think is really helpful. Um, and then also just collaborating overall, the Big Ten could be um, kind of maybe one of a leading sort of institution of universities that, that mm -hmm. work together provide sustainability um, initiatives. And then I also really liked the sustainable athletics um, because athletics is such a wide reach in 
the U.S. and a lot of people pay attention to it. And in Big Ten schools like Madison, a lot of events happen through athletics and it's very visible. Mm -hmm. um, so I think having that one of, as one of the priorities just by itself is a really good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Any other um, comments or discussions around what you guys like about these priority priorities? Or if there's other thoughts too, we can skip that and go to the things that people don't like first. If that, um, I like I like the emphasis on training. I think that's really important. That just even came up in our last group that um, training for staff on how to do. Um, recycling or composting or all of that is really important. Yeah, absolutely. What else? Any other thoughts? We can move um, to the next section question and then if there's anything else we can come back. Um, so are there any things that you don't like around these specific focus areas. Um, and the next question is if there's anything that you would change. So um, either of those two, does anybody have any feedback? Um, this is something I brought up in the last group too, is I, my training is in sustainable systems. So more of, you know, what are the systems connections um, in the, with the other, uh, with the other focus areas, um, not just the other focus areas, but the other initiatives. So mm -hmm. how, is it, how is it all sort of mapped out? Sure. And, and connected, interconnected. Yep, that's an important point. And if there's any ideas for different initiatives that fall within each of these focus areas too, that can be helpful. Um, this might be more for the last break I group I was in, which was the planning and administration. Um, mm -hmm. But when I think of engagement, I also think of like accessibility to mm -hmm. sustainability. And this, it does mainly fall under social sustainability, but I think it should be incorporated somehow into one of these um, focus areas and kind of trying to make sure that if you're, you know, training or incorporating it into athletics events, all this stuff somehow, I mean, like an educational component is there just so people know that or how to, I don't know, get involved with it. Cause sometimes I know, especially when it comes to like environmental justice related issues, a lot of um, BIPOC people or um, other like me indigenous folks also don't feel like they have accessibility, I guess, to being sustainable mm -hmm. or learning about it. Um, so I'm not sure where that would fit in exactly, but somehow incorporating that maybe almost in like branding, um, making sure it's inclusive branding and the communication is yeah. very clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or even within each of these focus areas have yeah. emphasis on that. Yeah, sounds really important. Yeah, that's a really good point, Sonaz. I, I kind of had that thought too. And I was also, I don't know if it's here or intended or whatever, but also our connection to sustainability in the city of Madison mm -hmm. and um, sort of our relationship with other nonprofits and government agencies who are doing sustainability so that we're not all reinventing the wheel, but how do we work collaboratively with these other organizations like Sustain Dane or um, MG&E or, you know, there's a lot of them and just how to sort of, um, yeah, leverage leverage our connections that way, whether it's with student projects or classroom studies or mm -hmm. um, uh, project initiatives. And I don't know, I might've missed that um, because this is the first time I've seen this. So um, but that's just a thought. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because engagement is both within the campus and the community. Um, yeah, I came up in our last conversation about how that is missing a little bit from a lot of Yeah, people. I work at the Arboretum and I would say the majority of people who are helping care for the Arboretum are not, not university people, yep. it's okay. community right. members. I, I would say like probably, you know, 75% of the people who are doing the land care are community members, yeah. not, not affiliated. 
Um, and I think that is somewhat true, not quite for Lakeshore Nature Preserve too. There's a lot of community members who are attending that space as well. Yeah, that's a great point. Maybe this isn't a, what we'd like to see changed about it. I don't want to sound like this is a mean thing, but enforcement, how do we make sure that like this isn't just really great ideas that we put out there and that it actually gets integrated into something or is there some sort of like reevaluative tool to see what works, what doesn't work, what are people asking for, what is the campus sustainability office asking for, um, so it's not just a lot of good marketing and PR and then there aren't a lot of results in a year or two. Great. Yeah, there might be some other types of metrics for that as well of, of how to track that and and that mm -hmm. and levels of engagement and and it are and are are the relationships maintained over time? That's one thing I see that happens in sustainability a lot is that there's this you know goodwill and intention and like three years later the funding goes away or the people go away or you know there's a turnover of staff or students and there goes the project and it has to be started all over again so mm -hmm. when thinking about community engagement what does it look like to you know um, really design programs for the long haul absolutely yeah i think both of those are really good points um i've kind of my thought of the entire all these recommendations and the the committee in general is that the whole purpose of this is sustainability integration, um, which I think falls under all of the um, four different focuses, but um, particularly with engagement too, and having community members and other prominent organizations in Madison, or like maybe even like the athletics department kind of take their own lead in a little way with sustainability too, I think would leave an impact for a long term. So if there was, um, I guess for athletics, if there was just like a committee created in athletics or um, like established partnerships where almost like separate entities of the university kind of ha take the, not lead, but take the reins so they feel like they have some sort of stake in it, I think would really make things stick for a longer time. Yeah, having a big institution like this is we, we have the, the privilege and the opportunity to be an anchor institutions for all kinds of things like water quality for the lakes, for example. Um, I know we do that some in the limnology, but there's all kinds of citizen science monitoring for the quality of lakes and how fluoride and um, other runoff and from buildings is, you know, that are happening along the shorelines are affecting the lakes. And, um, you know, as a large institution, we, the ability to work collaboratively over a long, long period of time and being the anchor institution, I mean, that I think there's a great opportunity here. Like, it, it looks like you all are thinking about that at Institute for Sustainability, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Travis, do you have anything to add? It's fine if you don't, but I make sure everybody gets a chance. No, I'm just listening in to not sway anything. One way or the other. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, and then looking at these specific eight, is there anything um, that could be changed or tweaked about? I mean, we talked about things that could be added or um, things that we like, but is there anything um, that you would actually change about any of these specific focus areas? or even the prioritization of them, right? Um, I wonder if uh, alumni engagement could be maybe combined with just like an overall priority of student body engagement because all of them kind of have some like aspect of students involved with them, but none of them are specifically, I guess, targeting um, students that you know, aren't super interested in sustainability and maybe haven't really been exposed to it before. Um, and I don't know if alumni engagement as an alumni, um, I don't know if it's as important as, you know, 
the students that are on campus now because the way you get alumni to continue to want to be engaged is by engaging them while they're students um mm -hmm. which is like why i you know chose to come to this today because like i worked so much with same on campus and i feel like i had a stake in it that i want to yeah. see where it goes um so maybe almost trying to morph that into i don't know if just like a general student and alumni engagement or something like that mm -hmm. I think we should be cautious that we aren't just focusing only on students or only on staff because then you're going to have a double standard um, that either seems like someone is not on board with the plan or someone is doing something directly against something or someone is trying to enforce something that someone else doesn't know about and creating those types of imbalances. Yeah, that's a great point as well. Um, I'm not sure how to put this into words, and, and, and I have permission to be imperfect here. So Absolutely. <laughs> um, it, it's sort of the metrics, you know, how are we doing over, over time? How are we, you know, is this, is there some way that the university can be leaders in identifying what is community level sustainability, you know, for the whole city of Madison, for example, and, and go out and evaluate that and say, here's, here's our scorecards this year or every couple years or something. But it has to do with, um, I think Madeline mentioned this too, like how are we measuring this? How are we determining if this is even working? Um, so, and then what are the success stories and what are the characteristics and conditions for creating those success stories and can create more of them? Um, and, I think that's going to become more and more important in cl with climate change, um, that we're going to have to really sort of ramp up um, sort of Great. Well, welcome, everyone. My name is Josh Arnold. I am one of the staff of the Office of Sustainability and uh, Campus Energy Advisor. And I'm joined by my colleague, Anjali. Anjali, would you like to do a quick introduction? Uh, sure. I'm a business process improvement manager here at the Office of Sustainability, and I've been on campus 16 years. Thank you, Anjali. And uh, the purpose of our breakout session uh, here is to discuss uh, some of the some of the uh, focus areas related to operations. So uh, we have a link uh, that we will put in the chat uh, for the focus areas and Anjali has graciously uh, agreed to uh, pr help provide that link and also uh, graciously agreed to take notes for us for this session. So you'll see that link uh, in the chat now. And uh, the document that we are, uh, that we are sharing there is uh, a document that um, has focus areas that have been developed uh, by the staff at the Office of Sustainability uh, and that have, uh, as, as Alex said earlier, that have been preliminarily discussed uh, with the uh, Sustainability Advisory Council. Um, so we think we are in the ballpark at least as far as some of the areas of focus, but the purpose of this listening session and our ongoing listening sessions is to hear from you as far as what have we gotten right? And what have we gotten wrong? Uh, what are we missing? Uh, and how can you help um, either contribute information or uh, connect us with other people or resources, organizations that are doing the same type of work? So that's sort of the purpose of what we are interested in hearing about. We do have some specific questions that we can go through and uh, and we'll just sort of go from there. So um, why don't we uh, just briefly start with um, quick introductions and then we'll uh, we'll get into some of the questions. So um, I'll just kind of go around the uh, the um, area as I see them on my screen. So it looks like Chris, I have you first and then Marion and Madeline, and then Travis. So Chris, if you don't mind, just a quick introduction. Tell us who you are. Hi, I'm Chris Davis. I'm a researcher in the Department of Nutritional Sciences and been on campus for 
you know, 15 years and yeah, just kind of interested in what's going on and what some of the plans are. Thank you, Chris. Welcome. Hi, I'm Marion Ferrier. I'm the restoration um, work party manager at the Arboretum, and I also work for U.S. Green Building Council. I work have worked at the Arboretum for 19 years. Welcome, Marion. I'm Madeline Norton. I'm in the space management office. I've been on campus for about two years, and I have a minor in sustainable studies from a while ago. Welcome, Madeline. Uh, Travis Blomberg, and I work for the Office of Sustainability. Welcome, Travis. Familiar face there. Great. Well, uh, without further ado, then, why don't we uh, uh, dive into some of the uh, operations focused uh, topics? And really, you know, we have a, a nice manageable group, so I'd like to make this uh, a situation where everyone has a, an opportunity to provide their, their feedback uh, and we are all listening and, and respecting each other's uh, comments and, and input uh, and taking turns. Uh, but at the same time, if we can make this as conversational as possible, I think that's always a, a nice thing. So uh, hopefully everyone has uh, access to this PDF document. And why don't we go and just take turns uh, as far as uh, your initial thoughts on the questions that we are looking to, uh, to answer or to get your feedback on, which is, uh, you know, what, what do you find, uh, what do you kind of like about the um, focus areas? And also, you know, what are we missing and, and what, might, what might we change? So, um, I think uh, probably the best way to go about doing this would be uh, to take turns. And uh, why don't we uh, go, uh, Madeline, if, if you want to start us off, and uh, then Marion, and then Chris, and then Travis. I don't want to start. This seems a little bit daunting. I'd like someone else to sure. go first. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Sorry, did, didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Uh, Marion. Um, um, this is the first time I've seen this, and so I'm just kind of getting a, a quick survey and overview. And I do what I one of the things I do like is the integration um, with the um, social justice in terms of looking at human rights and um, uh, procurements from minority and women-owned businesses and things like that. Um, and then. The other thing that I like is the connection with other programs and, and projects that are already um, happening both locally, regionally, and nationally. Um, and um, I don't, yeah, it's like, it seems like it has a good, the good um, aspect with people. One thing I see um, missing, this is just my viewpoint, is biodiversity. Um, how to, we have sustainable landscape management, but how to not just um, manage for uh, uh, pollinators, but also for diversity of plant species and soil. Um, I think soil, I think it, uh, working on soils is gonna be really big going forward and also water. And I'm not really seeing much on water. So really focusing, um, looking at those two topics and how to integrate those as well. Is that the kind of thing you're looking for? It's, that is wonderful. Thank you, Marion. Re really appreciate it. And you know, again, um, we we realize this is the first time that uh, that uh, most of you have have seen these uh, documents. So uh, it's perfectly fine to you know take some time and and read through things and continue to give us feedback. Um, uh, there there will be a, a survey after this uh, this um, listening session as well. If you have written feedback that you would like to give uh, on the documents, we would welcome that. But Marion, thank you so much for your, your feedback. I uh, really appreciate it. Can I add one more thing? This has to do Absolutely. with water. So this is gonna be, had to do with stormwater management, but um, just because we, we in the university has such an influence on the lakes and you know, sort of really paying attention to water quality and quantity issues um, affecting the local lakes. So that's one thing that I just don't quite see. And then another question I had though was, um, um, I, my training is in sustainable systems was sort of like, 
you know, how, how is this all integrated, right? You know, like a, a systems map at some point showing how everything's interrelated would be really helpful. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. I like uh, any volunteers on uh, going next, uh, Chris or Madeline? Probably give it a shot. Wonderful, thanks, Chris. Um, so yeah, kind of cruising through here again. I I also like a lot of the um, kind of how it's broken down and, and a lot of the aims that were considered. And um, I'm I think uh, a number of people think of sustainability through in, in different ways or have different things that they're focused on. So this is I tend to fixate a lot on, um, on energy usage and um, strategies you know, surrounding that. And when I think when I <clears throat> have kind of thought about this stuff from around campus um, and it's um, that's the lens that I'm kind of viewing it through. And, uh, and the ones that I've seen so far on here have been, I see a lot of good strategies um, and, and the example action items um, from what I can tell. Um, and I do see that like uh, that monitoring, um, building uh, energy usage is on all buildings is listed on there. I think potentially another follow-up to that would be maybe um, who gets that information or um, if there's something actionable that can be done with that information. Um, and um, I think there is some, um, it's kind of uh, something else that's sort of probably overlapped with a lot of the strategies on here, um, but is, is uh, trying, if there's a, a specific focus to finding ways to um, improve um, sustainability from a, like uh, making small improvements to reduce energy usage, uh, in existing buildings. Um, there's, I think from my viewpoint, there's a lot of low hanging fruit in that regard um, that can make a lot of headway. Um, and I think it's incorporated into a lot of the ideas here, but maybe like a, if I, unless I missed it, a specific action statement regarding that. But I, I do like a lot of what's on here and how it's laid out. Wonderful, thank, thank you, Chris. Uh, re yeah, really appreciate that. And uh, curious if uh, um, if you have any, you know, off the off the top of your head, is, is there like a facility that you've worked at, for example, or that you're familiar with that comes to mind as far as some of that low hanging fruit that might yeah. be out there on campus? Yeah. So, I mean, most of my world is in the building or two I work in. It's an older Nutritional science is an older building. Um, and there's some small things that are, I think are seen as simple um, or, or maybe not priorities, but things like uh, LED lighting, um, uh, programs to uh, swap out really old minus 80 freezers or like um, for, for newer ones, a lot of the newer ones are much more efficient. Um, uh, there's, um, I think people have mentioned some of the, I think it was list on there was water fixtures, you know, like you know, flushing toilets that flush and are more efficient, but I'm not sure if that's as big of issue here, but there's, um, not a lot of, uh, incentive for people within the department to take action because they they feel like, especially if they're you know, a, a professor is like buying something 
they tend to buy the cheapest thing, um, whatever whatever that happens to be. Um, and so it, it's not they're not incentivized to really like spend money to uh, to save money for someone else or you know. So that's where like the freezers kind of come in because they're going to get use the one that's been around for 20 years if it keeps working and which is good too in its own way but um, you, those are some things that come to mind to, to piggyback off chris i guess i have two so it says you're you're going to have trained staff to support but what sort of training are we going to give to staff about what resources are available or maybe some alternative ways of thinking before they make that purchase and then is campus willing to put more money behind the more expensive upfront thing that's going to be better longer term, or are they not really thinking about those budget considerations going forward? Wonderful. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Madeline. Uh, and I see we have, uh, we have a, a new guest. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Is it, is it I, Mary yeah. Lynn? Yep. That's Mary Lynn. Sorry, welcome. I'm late. So I was just, it was better than not being here at all. Oh, ab absolutely. The freezers. I know that we have um, like the biosafety cabinets and the fume hoods have somehow gotten into physical plant for maintenance and things. I don't know if freezers could be part of a process for that too. I don't know. They still would probably be looking for money from the department though, but they might be able to have free helpful um, requirements or something like, you know, something so that you can, I mean, maybe it's only $10 more. You just haven't figured, it takes a lot of time to figure out which unit to buy, you know? Right. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we, we are, are, we've got about only, oh my gosh, we, we only have about five more minutes before we switch rooms. I'd like to make sure we carve out some time. Uh, um, so, Mary Lynn, I realize you you um, joined us after we started, but what we're what we're doing is is just getting some uh, some of your feedback as far as uh, the initial ideas on operations and uh, what you like, what you don't like, um, and uh, as I said earlier, there'll be an opportunity to uh, provide written feedback in a survey and uh, and more listening sessions as well. Uh, with the couple of minutes we have left, uh, Mary Lynn, would you like to uh, give us any feedback on any of your observations? Or uh, Madeline, I can also uh, open up some time for you if you would like. Did you guys already talk about composting thing? Yeah. So we, did, uh, we have, yeah, we haven't discussed it as a group. We did actually try composting at 30 North Mills. Um, and we had people that were willing to take the compost out. I think it was twice a week. But it just seems like that whole thing. And I know that there are other groups that do it more and res halls do it a lot and stuff. But the education part just and even with the recycling, people still try to put colored paper in the white typing paper that we get more money for, and then you, the contamination stream. I mean, that's just, it's complicated for all users to understand, to take the time to understand problem. It's probably not hard to understand. It's just hard to get them to take the time to understand. So I don't know how to help address some of the, of the training things, because even with the compost, we had all sorts of problems with people putting in like, anything that said compostable they put in and we it was just we had a and then you don't want people grabbing things out of garbage i mean that's kind of bad too so i didn't sure. know guys were dealing with some of that we did have um the the student group that was working on um, composting come and give a talk to the building for like a lunch and learn kind of a thing but of mm -hmm. course like six people there right and they were all the people that are good at it anyway. So. Got it. Got it. That's just kind of personal thing I've seen, but. Okay. So, yeah. So some opportunities there on the composting and all that kind of thing makes sense. 
Um, we, we only have a couple of minutes left. Uh, Madeline, I uh, want to just circle back with you, see if you would uh, like to um, uh, give any feedback over uh, the chat or, or the, um, or, you know, over voice. Um, I'm not sure. I guess as like an avid uh, cyclist, <laughs> the campus could definitely do better on that with providing resources to make that a better year round um, activity. It's really hard to find a bike rack in the winter. It's really hard to put your bike inside in the winter. Um, not every facility has locker rooms or a private office for you to change your clothes in. Um, and I know there's a big move too to also just keep cars off campus because there's only so much parking we have capacity for. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure like really how much drive there is for people to bike in the rain or in the snow. Um, and that that's like, I, I realize I'm a niche audience on that front. Um, and then I'm not sure how we're counting it as far as like a fitness thing versus just a carbon thing. And if we're looking at more of those um, socioeconomic kind of equity lenses versus just environmental equity lenses um, as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, so, so biking and, and, and um, active transportation. That's, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, I, I wanna, I think we are all going to be switching rooms uh, within the minute, so I don't wanna cut anyone off uh, mid-sentence. Uh, let me just say thank you very much for your time and for uh, being willing to engage. It's not a perfect format that we have here, but it's sort of the best that we can do under the circumstances. Uh, we would invite you to uh, take your time to look over these uh, focus areas and um, provide us with additional feedback. You can send us an email, you can respond to the survey, um, you can follow up with any of us uh, individually if you like. Um, your voice is important in this, uh, in this um, process and we'll be relying on, on you and your colleagues uh, to really make this stuff a, a reality. So uh, really appreciate uh, your time. Um, I think with the instructions that Alex gave earlier, um, just to reiterate, uh, everyone will have their own opportunity to choose the uh, breakout room that you will go to next. So uh, just the same way that you uh, selected this breakout room, uh, you'll have the option to uh, click on the, uh, the breakout room uh, down at the bottom of the screen, and then you'll be able to transfer to the room, uh, the breakout room of your uh, interest. So uh, thank you again for uh, joining us, and uh, we'll have a chance uh, to do that switch uh, momentarily. And uh, again, thank you for being here. Thank you. Great, welcome to our uh, new guests. And uh, thank you for, for being here. Thank you for your time. We will, uh, we will give uh, everyone a, another minute or two to join us and then we will uh, dive into your feedback. Uh, in the meantime, I wanted to just uh, let everyone know that we are recording this session. So I just want to make everyone aware of that. And then also um, direct people to the chat. Uh, in the chat, you'll see a post from my colleague uh, Anjali. We'll do quick introductions. And uh, in that post, you'll see the link to the focus areas for our discussion uh, related to operations. So uh, I would encourage people to click on that link. And uh, Anjali is, is Okay, looks like we've we've put that link in twice. So uh, either of those links uh, that Anjali has posted will get you to the document that we'll be uh, discussing now. 
and uh, take a couple of minutes and start looking that over. And uh, as people join us, we will do a quick round of introductions and then uh, dive into the most important feature of today, which is your input on, uh, on our um, initial work. So I'll start with introductions. My name is Josh Arnold. I work with the Office of Sustainability. My role is Campus Energy Advisor and um, part of the team that's uh, supporting the Sustainability Advisory Council. Uh, Anjali, would you do a quick introduction and then Rex? You bet. So my name is Anjali Sridharan and I am the Business Process Improvement Manager here at the Office of Sustainability and I've been on campus 16 years. Thank you. I'm uh, Rex Loker. I also work with the Office of Sustainability as a facility architect and uh, been with the office for a year and a half on campus for three. Great. Thank you, Anjali and Rex. And uh, um, Anjali has graciously offered to uh, take notes for us today as well. So thank you for that. Uh, why don't we turn to our guests? Uh, Susan, I, I have you in, on my screen, and then uh, Tom, Bridget, and John, if, if you wouldn't mind just giving us a real quick um, introductions, tell us who you are, and then we'll dive into uh, some of the feedback around the operations focus areas. Well, I'm Susan Tavos in the sociology department. I'm a demographer by training, but my major interest now is into transportation. Wonderful. Uh, Welcome, Tom Susan. Tom Eggert, um, originally part of the group that planned the Office of Sustainability um, and part of the original advisory council taught classes in sustainability through both Nelson and School of Business. Welcome, Tom. Bridget? I'm Bridget, and I am very interested in sustainability in general. I've worked at Campus Sustainability for a long time, and um, across all of the, the relative issues, as they are all Bridget, um, we, we, uh, Bridget, this is one of those uh, technology challenges I think that Alex was previewing earlier, at least on my computer, so. Okay, uh, Bridget, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just interject because I'm having trouble uh, hearing you. So we'll, we'll um, hold off on, uh, on um, your introduction for now and then we'll uh, go over to John and, uh, and then take things from there. <laughs> Hi, Josh. Nice to see all my friends again. I apologize for not having my camera on. Uh, <laughs> But uh, Josh and I had an opportunity to collaborate. I know a lot of you on this, on this connection. Uh, and again, I'm going to shut my camera off because there's a whole bunch of stuff going on behind me. Thanks for letting me uh, participate today. Wonderful. Th thanks so much, John. Um, so let's uh, let's dive into uh, the document here. Uh, we we only have a few minutes, so um, I'd like to make sure that we carve out a little bit of time for uh, for everyone to give some very high level feedback. Um, the, the purpose of, of this, uh, this session is to hear from you as far as uh, what do you like so far? Uh, what are we missing? What can we do to uh, improve things? And uh, any other ideas you have on um, contributions or um, research or other organizations that you think might be helpful. So uh, Susan, why don't we start with you and then we'll go uh, Tom and John and Bridget. Uh, I, we, we did have trouble connecting with you earlier. So um, if, if you're in a spot where we can, uh, where we can uh, connect with you, then great. Otherwise, uh, I can follow up with you directly to get some of your feedback. But Susan, uh, the floor is yours. If you'd like to give us any high level uh, feedback, again, we realize you 
you've you know just seen this document recently, but uh, tell us tell us what you're interested in and and uh, wh what you think so far. Well, uh, I guess a, a major issue, and I'm not sure about the document. I've got to look at it again, but um, transportation has really moved into many more, um, what can I say, uh, vehicles that do not require the use of fossil fuels. And I'm wondering if things could go even more in that direction as far as utilizing things like delivery bicycles and, and such instead of uh, um, bigger vehicles. Does that make sense? Is that a, the kind of thing to talk about here? That's wonderful. Thank you, Susan. That, that uh, yes, we, we very much appreciate, uh, appreciate that feedback. Absolutely. So uh, it sounds like active transportation is something that you think would, yes, uh-huh. Wonderful, and also green fleet and decarbonizing our transportation, electric vehicles. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. Um, Tom, floor is yours. Yep, um, so just a, a couple of overall um, observations. I, I think what you are demonstrating in the, what, what we're able to see is the university as a laboratory. Um, and I really think that's a good model for us to take, demonstrate that it can work here, demonstrate that this makes sense so that communities, um, businesses, others can learn from what we're doing, whether it's putting up green buildings or working on green energy issues, um, you know, viewing the university as, um, as a model laboratory for you know, advancing um, ideas in that sustainable operations space. Because that's a space that a lot of people are looking for examples and they don't want to jump in. I'm just thinking, you know, particularly of the business community, what's the return on investment? Let's have the university go and make some investments, do some testing, and then, you know, then the business community is much more comfortable in, in taking that next step. Having said that, um, I, I know historically, one of the things that the university has really looked at is energy efficiency before sort of showy, you know, uh, photovoltaic panels or wind turbines. Um, why, you know, generate all this great electricity, great energy that we then just see flow out the windows or, you know, get lost from, from the efficiency. So I would encourage um, the, the SAC to continue to, to focus on, start with energy efficiency before we really focus on greening the energy supply. Um, and then the last comment they'll make, I saw something about um, purchasing carbon, um, carbon credits or um, RECs. Uh, and uh, again, it, it, I mean, I guess to some extent there's some modeling there, but to me it's, uh, <laughs> we should be investing in our own infrastructure um, as opposed to investing in somebody else's infrastructure. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you, Tom. Really, really appreciate your feedback. Uh, John. Th thanks, Josh. Um, so I like Tom and I failed to introduce myself. I'm a member of the adjunct faculty in civil engineering and I'm also on the UW Foundation Board. I like Tom was part of the original uh, group that uh, stood up this office at that time um, I made a proposal about right-sizing our footprint. Um, and I suggested that master planning shouldn't just be about how to place more buildings. Master planning should be about how big should our footprint really be. And other universities at the time were doing the same thing. So this is just a personal observation, having gone through that benchmarking process. I haven't done it since then. but. Uh, we feel overbuilt to me, and making something that's too much a little more efficient is much less impactful than just taking some away. The, the other thing I'll add, um, in the real estate business right now, COVID has forced a complete rethink about how space is used and what space we really need. And uh, it, surpri it surprises me that that dialogue with, with as distinguished as the Grass Camp School is, hasn't found its way to our campus. 
um, all of my colleagues in the real estate business and many of the members of the foundation board are very distinguished in this area are downsizing. They have great big projects that are stopped and that will never go ahead. So I don't know, sometimes it feels like we're like the alcoholic who's going to have the, going to drink their way to sobriety relative to our, to our buildings. We just build and build and build. Where are we? Are we at 30 million square feet now? I think we're at about 24 million. 24, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, there are ways to benchmark com compared to campuses that don't have the luxury of the real estate we have, but still have the same programs that we have. There are ways to benchmark. And I, you know, again, speaking from myself and for my, my colleagues, you know, I think the, if the university were to say something more profound then we're going to become more efficient, something more profound along the lines of, we're actually gonna get smaller as a result of COVID and as a result of technology. I think that would be well received. Thank you, John. Thank you for your feedback. Really appreciate it. Uh, Bridget, can, can you hear me? We, we had some trouble connecting with you earlier, but... Um, can you hear me? Yes, we sure can. Okay, um, so I, there, it's a little bit addressed in the training and onboarding of new employees, but I feel like a lot of operation stuff at the end of the day comes down to behavior. And so having a little bit more uh, focus on influencing positive behavior and social marketing, you see a little bit of that around campus with like the conserve energy signage and stuff like that, but it doesn't really give you an individual action. It's more like a little bit of a brag a brag poster um and so incorporating that and then some, somewhere along the lines of what was just being said i was at a talk with uh, by william mcdonough and he made a joke it wasn't that funny about how um you know if you asked a couple how their relationship was and you said sustainable then you'd think that's not a very good relationship um and so maybe there's some place where there's a room to go from beyond sustainability and beyond efficient to be thriving or a place where like the net negative type of conversation comes in into the fray um so i just throw that out there to, to sort of think a little bit bigger and beyond the framework that we're operating in Wonderful, Th thank you, Bridget. We we uh, we so glad that we're able to to get your feedback and uh, sorry sorry that there was uh, some challenge earlier, but really appreciate um, your willingness to uh, to persevere with us uh, in in this uh, in this listening session. So we we're getting close to the the end of our very short time together. Uh, we only have a, a couple of minutes left. I, I would like to just take a little bit of time to uh, uh, sort of outline some of the, the next steps and some additional opportunities to uh, continue to provide feedback and, uh, and to uh, have some additional communication. So uh, over the next couple of months, we will be uh, continuing to work with our uh, council on refining these focus areas and, and building out some more of the specifics that are uh, within the, the document that you see here. And uh, we, we would certainly invite you to uh, continue to provide feedback, uh, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or we will be uh, following up with a, a survey where uh, you can feel free to provide uh, any written feedback uh, as well. Um, then over time, this, this, uh, this process that we're uh, doing now, uh, this is only you know, this iteration of this process. So we expect to continue to evolve uh, this action and these recommendations uh, on, a, on a regular basis so that uh, we are um, you know, consistently uh, not only reacting to the situation uh, on the ground, but uh, being proactive and uh, trying to get ahead of the game wherever we can. So uh, most importantly, we're gonna need your help in order to, in order to make this happen. So um, we really appreciate you taking the time to provide the feedback now and look forward to uh, continued feedback, continued discussion over time. 
Um, we have just a couple of minutes left. Is there anyone who would like to uh, share any anything else that, that comes to mind that uh, that we haven't uh, captured yet, or any any of the other points that uh, they would like to elaborate on while while we're together? I'll just mention that as I was looking through the um, the priorities that are in that document. There's a lot of systems um, issues involved, and I'll just point out two quick ones. One in sustainable food um, systems that implies building relationships with local farms, um, securing supply chain, um, you know, supporting local farms, supporting the expansion development of the capacity to produce food during the winter, which is when you know students are around um, and we need to provide food, not just during harvest time. Um, and then, um, you know, also, I'm sure it's still a challenge for the university to um, to assess and get an arm, arms around energy um, use because that's not something that the university has ever paid for. It's all paid through the Department of Administration, and so trying to to actually, you know, sort of manage our energy use and and create incentives to reduce energy use. Um, is a set of systems that I think somebody thinks needs to think through carefully because right now any money that's saved doesn't come back to the university. It just goes back to the Department of Administration and the state. Well, uh, I wanted to add on to that in a very small way is what is the protocol about closing the windows so you can't even open them to get fresh air when when it's nice outside. <laughs> I mean, talk about energy and air conditioning and. Right, right. Yeah, it, it would be nice if, if, if when, when it's a nice day that, uh, that you could open up your, your window and, and get a breath of fresh air and, and not have to use uh, heating and cooling. Is, is that what you're yes. thinking about, Susan? Uh -huh. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. And thank you, Tom, for, for your feedback there as well. Um, I'm getting a notification from Alex that we will be, um, uh, we will be returned to the main session uh, in the next 30 seconds or so. So I don't want to uh, have anyone's comments interrupted, but again, let me just say thank you for your time. I know that you are all busy and uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to share your feedback with us and look forward to uh, to your uh, continued uh, support in, uh, in making these uh, recommendations a reality. So we will see you at the main session. Um, all right, so I'll start. I'm Nathan Yandel. Uh, I'm the Assistant Director and Communications Director for the Office of Sustainability, and I'll be facilitating this breakout. Um, and I just welcome everyone to give your name and uh, maybe where you're hailing from. And I will just go around uh, in order here. Why don't you go first, Natalie? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Natalie, and I am the Associate Students in Madison Sustainability Chair, and I serve on the council. Uh, Sanaz? Hi, everyone. I'm Sanaz, and I'm an alumni, and I graduated last May. Uh, Tom? Tom Meggert um, was actually part of the original creation of the Office of Sustainability um, and have retired. Hi, Tom. Uh, Stephanie. Um, hello, my name is Stephanie. My pronouns are here. she, her, hers. Um, I, uh, I'm part of WISCAC, the Wisconsin Climate, the Wisconsin Student Climate Action <laughs> Coalition. It's a long name. Uh, and that's how I met, how I knew about this opportunity to talk about this. Uh, Rex. Uh, I'm Rex Loker. I'm with the Office of Sustainability Facility Architect. And anything else? Uh, I've been around a long time with the office, just a year and a half. Thanks, Rex. Bridget. Hey, I'm Bridget, and I am doing many things at the moment. Um, my pronouns are she, her, the other ones. Um, and I work at UW, and this is just my area of interest. Thanks, Bridget. Thanks for fitting us in. Uh, John. 
Uh, good afternoon, I guess it is. Apologies for not having my camera on. There's a lot going on in the background today. Um, I'm um, adjunct faculty in civil engineering and I serve on the UW Foundation Board. Great, thanks so much, John. All right, I, that's all I see. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen. This phrase we've heard so many times now. Um, uh, Natalie's gonna be very helpfully uh, helping out taking notes today. And um, what Natalie also dropped into the chat, I'm actually gonna re-drop into the chat for those of you who may not have seen it, if you came in at, right after she sent it, um, is the full set of, um, the, the full focus areas for this group, for the planning administration group. So that includes uh, the focus areas. It includes the issues that those focus areas are seeking to address, it includes potential initiatives that might fall within those focus area to, areas. And then it also drills all the way down uh, to the level of potential action items. Now today, I'm gonna bring this up. Can you all see this uh, spreadsheet? Okay, great. So today we're gonna try to mostly keep our conversation within the, um, the, fo the, the focus of the focus areas and the example initiatives that'll help explain them. Um, but I am able to, you'll, you'll have those action items in that document and I can also expand out um, the spreadsheet and show action items as well if, if it uh, becomes useful to talk about that. So um, I'll quickly go through the focus areas once more. I'm gonna to try to make that very quick because I don't wanna take up too much time uh, because mostly what this is is an opportunity for you all to, to speak out to us. Uh, so these focus areas are in preliminary order uh, as Alex intimated in the, in the introduction. Um, the, the SAC has done some initial voting and there will be two more meetings before we actually create a report where they really dig in and create a final ordering. And so you are all here at a key moment to help us figure out what that order looks like. So uh, in order, the uh, social sustainability, which is, as Alex said, sort of the, the overlap between sustainability um, and things like equity, justice, and, and inclusivity. Um, good example of this, because it can be a little bit hard to um, conceptualize are things like the, um, the frequency of dirty industries by um, communities of color. Um, it's an environmental justice question. Uh, so dealing with justice, dealing with equity, dealing with these um, questions of diversity is essential in order for us to um, be able to deal with the sustainability of, for example, power plants. Sustainability integration refers to this kind of incorporation of sustainability into the strategic decision-making of the university. So kind of top-down work. Um, the investments piece uh, should be pretty clear. Transparency in the university's investment portfolios and also potentially including sustainable investment policies, whether that's um, uh, environmental investment options for donors or divesting from fossil fuels or the like. Um, institutional structures for sustainability includes things like uh, a more robust um, office and staffing to make sure that sustainability is advanced across campus. Um, this would, this would uh, sort of expand the Office of Sustainability, among other things, create a position that was higher up than, than what we currently have. Systems-based decision-making, where we're kind of looking at the um, intersection and overlap of policies, planning, and strategic decisions and making sure that sustainability is part of that so that we think in terms of the whole system of the university. A green revolving fund, um, which might uh, allow us to do more operational imp improvements um, by seeding a fund with more money to, to start with, and then employee engagement where we're really kind of building in sustainability into the ways in which we empower employees on campus. So that's my quick overview. Um, as I say, uh, you've got even more information in the link that uh, Natalie shared. And so let's just launch in. Um, and I, I kind of want to leave all these three questions open, but we'll sort of try to go top to bottom, which is to say, let's start with the what you like and maybe what you don't like about the, the prioritized focus areas. And then we can talk a little bit about what change might look like. Okay, Nathan, you... just a, quick, a quick question. Yes, sir. Um, of these seven, are these pulled from the STARS evaluation or how do these fit within the STARS evaluation? Right, so the, the STARS report that, and I'm gonna step back a little time just so everybody understands. 
Um, STARS is the Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating System. It's the, um, it's the uh, sort of reporting system that UW-Madison used for the first time about a year and a half ago to assess our sustainability performance across a whole number of different metrics. And so to answer your question, yes, these were pulled from the STARS report um, primarily. So what, what that means, so what's the implication of that? One of the implications is that by achieving some of these things, by working on some of these categories or these focus areas as we call them, we also potentially improve our, scars, our STARS score going forward. And of course the score isn't the important part, but nevertheless, we do wanna be making gains in places where we didn't do so well in the first report. Can you share our scores from that first report in these areas? Are these in a prioritization area from where we scored worst, sort of going up? So uh, great. Is it a prioritization sure. question? Um, not precisely. So um, we can share this information. Uh, so the stars report is public. Um, so you can you can look up UW Madison stars report and you'll you'll get right to it and you'll see where we um, performed well and where we didn't. Also on our website, sustainability.wisc.edu, there's a data and reporting menu. And if you go there and you scroll down, you can see um, some of our other performance metrics around the STARS report. Uh, that informed the conversations of the SAC for the last nine months or so. Um, Alex created a kind of heat map where he showed exactly how we compared, how our university compared to other Big Ten universities, other peer universities, what our gap was between uh, our scores and theirs. Uh, in some cases, we're doing pretty well. In other cases, we're doing fairly terribly. We scored a silver out of uh, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, um, which is sort of a pretty good way to start off for a big university, but certainly leaves us a lot of headroom to, to go. So that's a long answer for saying, no, this isn't exactly related to what our maximum stars points are. This is also related to what the SAC thought would be the most valuable for us to do. Um, Nathan, could you explain more the second one? Um, if you have any examples of the processes that sure. will be, is this kind of like making sure that what the SAC suggests is incorporated in all parts of the university? Is that the purpose? Uh, yes, and I'm trying to find my, what was supposed to be my hidden, uh, A, B, C, D, E, should be an F here somewhere. Sorry, let me see if I can get this to unhide. Huh. I think both E and G, you can unhide F. Like if, if you I... highlight both E and G column. Maybe. <laughs> I tried. This is not the uh, issue we were supposed to have. All right, so I think to be a little more versatile here, or uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go here and I will reshare. Sorry about this. Okay. Oh, so we will go back. We will go and just dive right in here. So, so now as you're asking about the sustainability integration, right? Yep. Okay, so what, what the SAC discussed here was this issue that UW-Madison lacks this, con this consistent inclusion of the sustainability and upper leadership communications and strategic decision-making. Um, so we're thinking about this in terms of uh, potential action items, including things like creating educational opportunities and materials to build the sustainable capacity of leadership. So what a leadership know about sustainability? How can they help sort of push this down through the university. Um, sustainability is clearly a top-down and bottom-up activity. It can't just happen because of decrees made by administrators and it can't just happen because we all decide to recycle a little bit better. Um, but this is a, this focus area considers the, the buy-in of campus leadership. Um, it also asks that we think about things like, you know, the university has a strategic framework that it releases every several years how can we incorporate and define the relationship between the, the priorities created by the SAC and those strategic uh, initiatives that come out of that? Basically, how can we embed sustainability, integrate sustainability? Um, okay. 
So that's that's kind of how I would put it. Nathan, let me just add one addition there from a business world when they're asking this question um, where we're moving now is senior managers are having sustainability included in their evaluation metrics. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't it be nice to include requirements for the provost, the chancellor, um, you know, other senior managers to have to be evaluated on sustainability performance along with well all the other things that they're evaluated on. Right. Yeah, that's a great point. So part of what we would be dealing with there is, um, you know, what what does that look like? What sort of things are they being evaluated on? How do we measure those things? So since we're a small group, I'll just ask. Um, would it be helpful to just stay in this more complicated document uh, and just have me scroll a little bit? Or would you rather go back to the simplified one and come here when we need to see the action items? I'd vote go, go back to the other one, the simplified one. This is too, too much a information. Of, a lot of words in here. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right, we'll try that. Um, I apologize that I'm having trouble with the other one. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I'm back. So one of the things you're seeing here is this kind of, you know, mixture of different, of different folk, I'll keep using this word focus, this, you know, different kind of foci and the way that the SAC has decided um, that they should be ordered. And it's not necessarily about starting from a decisional standpoint and working down to sort of the everyday experience of students on campus, which might lead us to start with something like institutional structures for sustainability and end with employee engagement and social sustainability or something like that. Um, you can see that, uh, that values are kind of built into these decisions. And so there, as Tom was suggesting, there's a, a STARS component here of how we're kind of rating our, our university, but there's also what are important values to the people who are sitting on the SAC and what do we consider important values to the university? Well, uh, this is Rex from from a implementation perspective. I, I can't argue with any of these issues. Obviously, uh, I I think the item number two integration and um, item number five decision making. The integration is key to making this. Uh, happen at the university level. And if we're going to proceed, those are the two that I see as uh, really highest priorities. Um, social sustainability, yes, absolutely. But is it the highest priority? I don't know. That's mm -hmm. for what it's worth, just a comment. Could I touch uh, on that subject, Nathan? Please. Um, Regarding that statement and the question that John posed, um, I think it's also important to think back on who created this movement of sustainability when it was Black and Indigenous people on this land, and it was all rooted on oppression. And so if we disregard the same processes that created this oppression, those systems of oppression within these people that led them to take on this movement, we are not engaging everybody on the, upon the conversation. And having stated that, it may seem so far ahead, social justice, you know, than like climate change. Climate change is such a biological conversation that engages with our language every day, but BIPOC people also have their own issues. And so if we want to incorporate all of our issues, because at the end of the day, it's being like, um, oppression from white supremacy, capitalism, sexism, and then many other discriminatory norms, we have to take on the initiatives of social sustainability. And I actually wanted to ask if 
the first framework of social sustainability included some conversations and you know more action items uh, to be partnered up with the UW BIPOC Coalition or the uh, Wisconsin Student Climate Action Coalition. Sure. So, can you say a little bit more about that last question? Whether are uh, you asking whether we partnered with them to create this, or whether there's future plans to to work with them, or or what's your um, what are you trying to get at? Yes, exactly. Like you said, does it in, is it included in the framework? Um, yeah. So we haven't specifically worked with uh, WISCAC or the um, UW Madison BIPOC Coalition in creating these, although we did go to students, um, for example, in our social sustainability coalition at the Office of Sustainability to get some input on this particular focus area. Um, but I think that that is a really important thing uh, as we move to the like implementation stage of this as well, that we consider those, you know, those groups and the partnerships that they can offer. Um, and I don't think that we can actually do any of these initiatives or go through any of the actions without doing so. Um, the other thing I'd say, which I think is important to your earlier uh, point about how sort of like the, the basis of sustainability is, um, you know, kind of, kind of comes from people of color and indigenous communities in many ways. Uh, there was conversation, it looks like we've only got about a minute before we're gonna switch rooms here, but there was conversation uh, in this, in the planning administration conversation about whether social sustainability should even be its own focus area, or rather whether everything that's in there should be distributed throughout the entire set of recommendations, you know, because sort of like you don't, you don't want to use, uh, you know, diversity as something you apply on something you want it to be part of the, the fabric of everyday life. Same thing goes here. Uh, ultimately, it was decided that probably both is best, that we call it out as a set of actions and values we want to prioritize, and also that we looked for ways to incorporate social sustainability values throughout all of the recommendations. Agree. Um, I don't know if we have that much time, but yeah. actually the point about, you know, not applying diversity as like a one must check out from the checklist, uh, and it should be incorporated in the whole framework. I was part of the climate change task force from the governor and in the report that we have created and we released during October, it was the same framework that we uh, applied, making it social justice and sustainability, uh, social sustainability, the main like thing to like consider when before applying any type of legislation, such as, you know, planting more trees and things like that and more green jobs. So I think that would be a good approach to take on. Yep, yep, that's a great point. And the Office of Sustainability is also in touch and, and collaborating with um, the governor's task force via Maria, Maria Redmond there as well. So definitely on board. <laughs> well, um, Alex is inviting us all to switch already. Uh, so. Are there any final thoughts before I invite you to click again on breakout rooms and find your way somewhere else? I'll just put a plug in for the sustainable investments. Um, I know that's been a topic that the university has been struggling with for 15 years. Um, and so raising it up yet again, uh, I think is a, um, is a good, it's a good position for the SAC to take. Um, it actually aligns now with the Faculty Senate and the recommendations that they're making. So maybe the time has finally come to have these discussions um, in a meaningful way with the foundation. Yep, that's a good point, Tom. And that definitely feels like there's some momentum amongst various governance bodies and other groups on campus to bring that conversation to the fore. All right, well, it looks like some new people are trickling in and I don't wanna kick anybody out, but uh, we, we do invite you to jump to another one unless you'd like to stay here and keep talking about this. Welcome newcomers. I'm just gonna stop sharing for a moment so we can do introductions real quick.
actually, while I do that, I'm going to wait one more second here, and I'm going to see whether I can figure out this, this expansion problem I was having. All right, folks. Well, welcome to this breakout group. Um, we're gonna be talking about the planning and administration uh, focus areas. I hope you had a productive conversation in the first one. Uh, my name is Nathan Yondel. I'm the Assistant Director and Communications Director for the Office of Sustainability. And as with your previous group, I think, um, we will be um, uh, doing some quick introductions and then diving right in. So I just introduced myself. Natalie, why don't you go ahead? Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Um, I am the Associated Students of Madison Sustainability Chair and also an Office of Sustainability Intern. Thanks, Natalie. I'm Becca Raven Yuminowitz. I'm Administrative Manager at the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences, and uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm Mary Lynn. I'm in the Space Management Office. And I just believe in it, so I'm trying to keep up. Thank you. Um, Aaron Birdbear, I'm the inaugural Tribal Relations Director in the Office of University Relations here at UW Madison. I'm a member of the Mandan Hadats and Arikara Nation, uh, which is about a thousand miles from here. And my mother's a member of the Navajo Nation. So I've had to get to know the 12 native nations of the Western Great Lakes in my 20 years of working at UW Madison. Um, and I'm um, just excited to share this. And my pronouns are he, him, his. I could, wasn't able to enter it into the machine thing, so I apologize about that. Thank you. Chris Davis, I'm a researcher in nutritional sciences, and um, I'm mostly just uh, interested in um, trying to figure out what's going on and how I can help. Awesome. Hi, my name is Gloria Heist. I'm a student, a second year in the business school. Um, I'm a part of a club called Social and Environmental Business Advocates, and uh, I, don't know, I just wanted to learn some more, see how I could help. Thanks, great to have you. All right, um, can everyone see in the chat, Natalie has dropped in a link. Are you able to see that? Okay, so that is a link to the the full shebang of the planning administration focus areas. And so what that includes are not only the focus areas, um, but the questions, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the issues that those focus areas are intended to try to resolve on campus, the initiatives that we might pursue, and then the uh, whole bunch of action items that we might actually undertake um, if we were to, to, to push for, forward with those initiatives. So I invite you to keep that open on your screen or available. Um, I'm shortly gonna show a kind of condensed version of this to make it a little easier for us to talk about these uh, focus areas without um, having a lots and lots of words in front of our um, faces. Uh, but if need be, we can switch over to that and for example, talk a little bit about action items or something like that, if that's useful. All right, so let me share again. And we are recording just to remind you. Cool. So here's the short list. Um, and to remind you what this is, uh, you would have you will have heard this in the last meeting, but these are the initial, this is the initial ranking of these focus areas. So this is not final, and this is why we, we are looking for your input because we want to talk a little bit about what these are and the fact that they're ranked in this way and ask you whether you have input on that. Um, so I think I took a little too long in the last breakout, so I'll try to make this really quick going through these once more. Um, these are, you know, the focus areas in order of initial priority, priority are social sustainability. So that's um, uh, the overlap of environment um, with equity, inclusivity, and justice. So it's these, uh, you know, social values that, that are important for it, this not to just be environmentalism, but to actually be sustainability. Um, sustainability integration, which is about integrating 
uh, the priorities that the SAC produce into strategic decision making for the whole university and not having it be something that's sort of um, initiative by initiative, but rather something that the university is building into its strategic decisions. Sustainable investments, it's pretty straightforward. That means transparency in um, UW's tra investment for portfolios, uh, and also potentially making investment policies that are aimed towards doing things like, for example, divesting from fossil fuels and or offering investment options for donors that are considered um, sustainable. Uh, creating institutional structures, which might mean um, more staffing, moving up uh, the Office of Sustainability, maybe creating something else um, with a higher level leadership position so that uh, there can be more institutional integration, kind of going back to that phrase. Using systems-based decision-making to implement sustainability across campus. So this is thinking everything kind of soup to nuts. How do you keep sustainability involved? How do you make it part of the, um, the policies, the planning? and the decision-making. Uh, final two is a green revolving fund. So it's a larger, a larger fund that would allow us to um, basically do more direct uh, operational improvements um, rather than have that be attached onto a given project if possible. And then finally is employee engagement. How do we keep everybody um, aware and involved in sustainable initiatives on campus and feeling like they're part of that culture? Okay. I don't know what you think, Natalie. That was a little better, still a little bit long. Um, I'm going to open it all up to you all. And uh, as with the last conversation, I'm curious, what do you like? What do you not like? Um, you can start with that, but um, I'm, I'm fine to let these three questions kind of blend into each other. Talking about what change you would like to see here is also fair game. Yeah, I can, I can start. Um, I do like the first priority of equity, inclusivity, and justice. Um, about sustainability and resilience. And, and I shared this in the last group as well, that, you know, 1848, when the university and the state is created forward till today, is literally the last 1.4% of the human story of the shores of our lake. Um, you know, DA413, our archaeological site, is 12,000 years old. So we've had humans living on this lake shore for 12,000 years. And the Ho-Chunk Nation and the other nations who call this place home over time um, had a compact with nature. They had a very different relationship to the land and the living world around them. And the indigenous nations of Wisconsin consider all the plants and animals to be our relatives and teachers, and we learn so much from them. And so the way that they sustain the environments here, um, they created a burr oak savanna and prairie system here in southern Wisconsin, which has been eradicated with the colonization of Wisconsin. Uh, the northern forests of Wisconsin were detimbered for the creation of mines and, and the cities of Chicago and Milwaukee. And so when I think about sustainability and conservation, we're working within a settler colonial framework. We're thinking of our settler colonial kind of ways of being, and we're ignoring the 98.6% of the human story of indigeneity of this space of how they created these wonderful biodiverse systems um, to try to have all plants and animals have the healthiest lives that we could. So I think equity, inclusivity, and justice has to include the indigenous kind of worldview of the people who've called this place home for time immemorial in the ways that they've related to the living world around them for so long. And so I, I just think that's a really important part of social sustainability is acknowledging, okay, we live in a settler colonial society and the goal, the organizing principle and goal of all settler colonial societies is replacement. In this case, the replacement of the indigenous society. So the replacement of indigenous knowledge and worldview in relation to the living world. Um, we're now just looking at solely through a settler colonial lens of how we exploit the environment for profit and gain versus how we live uh, among our relatives and teachers and try to sustain the most biodiverse environments we can. Thank you. Uh, incredibly eloquent uh, sort of expansion um, and defense in a sense of this of this item, but I think really deepening it quite a lot. So thanks. Some of the action items that fall in here, and I think I can just switch over here. You can all see this. So some of the action items um, speak to some of the things you were mentioning, Aaron, but um, I certainly think there's more opportunity there. Um, I'm thinking of, uh, possibility of land reparations or scholarship for Ho-Chunk or other indigenous communities. Um, the just transition, transition framework, I would say, for climate action and adaptation planning also considers uh, the implications on, on and of indigenous communities um, on thinking about climate action. Uh, and there's, there's a bunch of other things in here as well. But I think we have a lot to learn from what you just said. 
if we, if we want to be a truly sustainable and lead the Big Ten and show the Big Ten how sustainability and conservation does, we would think about the living world around us and we think about, okay, what what all these species that are around us came, came from these ecosystems that were developed over millions of years. And, and they're still among us, but they have much more limited access to the kind of natural systems that sustain them. So if we wanted to return to like a tall grass prairie as an institution to, to allow for the health and vitality of all living animals around us, we would show the rest of the Big Ten, you know, what sustainability and conservation really looks like. If you turn Bascom Hill into like a giant monarch way station, uh, that would be a way instead of having grass, which is a nutritional desert for the most part, it doesn't sustain a lot of animals. Um, but of all these spaces that we have that we could return them to, to create a bounty for all nature, um, that would allow us to kind of think about our relationship to the land and relationship to the world as a community. And so I think if we let, wanted to show the Big Ten how it's done, you know, we we commit our, our the incredible public spaces we have back to trying to make the most biodiverse place that we could. We've definitely talked about Bascom in the, the office before. I don't know if we're gonna get up that hill as it were anytime soon, but I, I certainly love the idea. We will need some outdoor grass carpets probably some places, but there's certainly a lot of places that we can make it be more inclusive. I also feel like we haven't done a very good job in the current culture to keep it sustainable. So I think that using historic methods are going to come, they had it figured out way better before colonization came and wiped out stuff. So the answers may well already have been defined and we just aren't looking at them. So one, one thing I might, a connection I might make here, this is something that came up in the last conversation is um, there, was, there was conversation during the, uh, the focus and administration meeting of the SAC about whether social sustainability in a sense should be its own item or whether rather it should be distributed throughout all the items, all the recommendations that those values you know, should not be an add-on, um, they should be something that's integrated. And sort of likewise, if we take what Aaron has said and, and also um, think about this kind of other and mar far deeper model of living with the land and living with animals and so forth, you know, what does that mean for institutional structures for sustainability? What does that mean for sustainable investments? What does it mean for employee engagement? Um, ultimately, the, the SAC decided that it should be both. There should be an item that's called social sustainability to make sure that it's called out. And then also that more of those initiatives and action items should be distributed throughout the recommendations. Um, the both and approach is usually the better one. But uh, I think the, the way this conversation is going, it makes me think further about other ways that this focus area could inform the rest, regardless of the ranking. When I was kind of looking at this, it was, um, I felt like a lot of, on the surface, even the, some of the first five items were a little more integrated together because because um, I was trying to, something that I'm interested in uh, is the revolving fund, green revolving fund, but it doesn't, it's, it's sort of a, I realized that it doesn't, I prioritize those first five items as, um, as the overall priorities in, in how this, how it should be done. Um, and then something like the Green Revolving Fund is something that I think could create a lot of um, options to, like it could facilitate um, these things happening, but it's not necessarily something to prioritize over them. Sure. Um, in, a, in and of itself, um, but it's, yeah. I'm not sure. Well, I wish Alex were, were here to help me remember, but I believe the Green Revolving Fund may have been one of the initiatives within sustainable investments at a certain point, and we decided to okay. kind of ex extract it um, to mm -hmm. allow for that to really be focused on, you know, monetary yeah, investment versus projects. Yeah, because it it really would, if it's something that's feasible for the university, it's it provides it could potentially provide a lot of 
a large ability to address a number of issues um, on an annual basis, but um, it's not necessarily a driving priority in itself, of itself. So would you say that in a sense, a green revolving fund might be more of an initiative than a focus area? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, at least mentally, I'm thinking of it that way, or sure. it's categorized just slightly differently mm -hmm. um, than these other ones in that way, yeah. We've got about three or four more minutes. Go ahead, please. Yeah, and also I had, um, I like kind of like uh, institutional structures for sustainability, um, staffing in particular. You know, I, I think about the major ways we communicate our value systems to all of our community, whether it be students, faculty or staff or researchers. And so I think like Center for First Year Experience, like, you know, how we welcome the students to the value system of us when we say the Wisconsin idea. And although Wisconsin idea is un really undefined, it's this vague nebulous thing that we have, but but that's what we say who we are. And um, when you join us, you're buying into this idea in some way, shape or form, or at least being influenced by it. And so I think, you know, uh, the ways we communicate our value system to everybody is really important. I think you need staff to help kind of think about the messaging that we do for how we welcome new students into our community, how we welcome new employees to our community, new faculty into their roles in our institution. And so I think about how do we engage uh, that kind of mindset to all of our community members to the appropriate offices that are designed to help people transition into the institution as part of our community. So I kind of think about that, that kind of part. And so processes, I just wonder about all these millions of committees that exist out there on our campus to, uh, to deliberate and decide upon how things function within our institution. And, and since we're such a, you know, the classic example of a decentralized institution that everybody kind of has their own little fiefdom and does their own work in a way that it's most appropriate for them to accomplish their work, you know, it makes for university-wide communications really challenging. And so when I think about processes, I think about, you know, acknowledging the, the decentralization and how, does, how do we get these messages to all these different constituencies within our community. Mm. Um, and so just hopefully that each community can embrace sustainability and conservation in a way that makes the most sense for their field to do so or their area to do so. The humanities would do it much different than the sciences or engineering. And so I just kind of think about having to acknowledge the process of, of the very different cultures across campus, depending on which school and college you're part of. I keep thinking about how the wellness committee has done it. They've actually hired a person to at least carry out the connections and find some of the resources and stuff. And then they have mon monthly meetings where different groups get together and talk about what they did. Is that anything that you guys have on? The, and then that could actually get into the employee engagement as well, but it would be, then you have, you know, vet medicine listening to CALS, listening to LNS and or Nelson Institute, and you'd actually get some synergy, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Because you kind of have to take some of the decentralization. It's, it's, some of it exists, right? Yep. Yeah, we certainly wrestle with that as an office. And I think if you look across all the focus areas, you will, in a sense, see us wrestling with that back and forth between creating um, leadership structures and councils and committees and so on, and also see, understanding how to you know, integrate this across this very siloed um, university and and the communication um, portion of it is is particularly difficult because as Aaron said everybody's kind of got their own things that they're doing for their own reasons um, and we're trying to tell them that okay welcome back everyone I'm sorry if we had to cut anyone off uh, mid-sentence but we're running up right here at the end of time so Deb would you take us through our quick group takeaway yeah we always like to end with some sort of closing a uh, little closing activity. And so we want you today, we have a kind of a big group, so we don't have time to do a verbal whip around, but we'd like you to, in the chat, post um, something that you're taking with you, something that really stuck out with you from your the conversations you were involved in today. We'll, we'll read a few of them out loud. I might not get to all of them, uh, but just, you know, take a moment to uh, share some closing thought, a closing thought. No thoughts? I can't believe that. 
Um, I'll, I'll just add one. Um, it, it's really interesting to see all these initiatives and I'm excited to see them. And I was just rambling on about climate change in the last group about how do we, you know, ramp up and, and be nimble and entrepreneurial and flexible as we are going into um, more climate change issues. Thanks, Marion. Thanks. So a couple of things we've got in the chat, sustainability is social as well as environmental. Yeah, acknowledgement of the settler colonialism framework in this process and the need to recognize other cultures and worldviews. Got a theme emerging there, that's good. Metrics and KPIs are important to determine success. Uh, the notion of reevaluating use of existing facilities in addition to new ones, yes. Uh, we've got a few more here coming in. Our community is thinking deeply about wellness and sustainability intersects with wellness for all living beings that make our community the plants and animals that comprise our living world. Uh, I don't know what that means. There's two little, what do you call those little hat notation? Don't know. That what means I like support this sentence and I like agree with it. Thanks, Gloria. Uh, the importance of sustainability integration within all UW departments and community groups and members to maintain long lasting effects. Yeah, so it looks like we've got some really good intersecting ideas there around how these things are, everything's connected. So I'll turn it back to Alex to close us out. Great, thank you, Deb, and thank you everyone for um, taking the time to be with us today. Feel free to continue to put thoughts into the chat. Um, as I'm going over quick next steps here um, as it comes to you. Uh, let's see. So yeah, um, again, I really appreciate you taking the time, I'm sure out of all of your very busy days to join us um, and to offer your thoughts and opinions. Um, all this information will be um, directly um, supplied to the SAC and incorporated into the final recommendation development process. Um, on next steps, um, if you have additional um, feedback you'd like to provide, you can return to that same website where you registered for this event. There's a link to a new survey that basically asks the same questions, very open-ended. If you'd like to provide any additional thoughts or anonymous thoughts, you could fill out that survey and provide feedback that way. There's also an email listserv you could sign up for to get updates um, on the progress of the SAC. Or if this was just so much fun, you want to do it again. We've got two more of these um, next week, um, Tuesday night and Thursday night next week. The one Thursday night is reserved specifically for students. Um, but if you don't want to come, feel free to invite your friends um, as well. You also could reach out to us directly. Um, email us at sac at sustainability.wisc.edu. Or if you'd like to just stay generally up to date and all the things that our Office of Sustainability is working on, you can follow us on social media at SustainUW or sign up for our newsletter. So with that, um, I'll let you Wait, go. I think we'll go down. Alex, can we, I just want to uh, acknowledge the, we had one comment come in and I just want to acknowledge it. So we need to grapple with how to engage our community on a decentralized campus. Yes, thank you for that comment. Okay, sorry, Alex, just want <laughs> to get in there. <laughs> thank, thank you, Deb. But that's it for our time. Um, have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.